They just shut down my, they won't let me upload my live stream. So you know the demons are out. So you know, you know the demons are out. I just want you guys to understand that. There's no way. I, I fucking hate it. I'm talking about my personal life and it's my business. So I'm going to start all the hell over again. Okay, here's, they just shut, YouTube shuts me down where I can't even upload my video. So it just cuts me off and does it. So here's the thing. Hi, you guys. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. So here's what I was saying, because I'm not going to shut up ever. Never. Okay. So anyway, this crazy see you next Tegan on here. I'm not going to say her name. I come home at four o'clock in the morning after being out on the hooker track. Okay. So I'll tell you about that in a second. So I come home at four in the morning and some of y'all are messaging me about this crazy Karen. And I don't even want to use the word Karen. She's a demon. Um, she's a chaos causer. So this crazy chaos caller, okay, causer, she takes part of my video and she puts it up on her site. And then she proceeds to call me an idiot, an idiot, because I mentioned that I would delete the video. So I made the video private. Yeah, she's a rant. I don't know who she is unless I do, but I don't. I mean, she could be hiding under, it could be a family member, you know, because John was so interested at dinner. Who is she? What was the video about? I'm like, mm -hmm, uh-huh. But she seems to have a channel anyway. I mean, it could be somebody's, he knows. But anyway, I don't know if he knows. So anyway, yeah, I had, yeah, that bitch. Ashley, that bitch, right? So anyway, she puts this up and you guys messaged me. So I put a copy, copy, um, yeah, she was looking for dirt on me from my own video, which I'll say to your face. We all know about my marriage. It's it's known around town. I scream at him in public. People fucking know on all over town my relationship. I left my husband after 33 years. Do you think that that was a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I left after 33 years. Figure it out. Figure it out. Either I'm the bitch or he's the bitch. Um, so she literally, literally... And it wasn't even that part. I was talking about Keith on the part of the video she took. So I, it was something about Keith in the corner. Anyway, she literally, she literally is like, this woman's an idiot. She's talking about me. So I went on her page. I'm like, listen, bitch, take my video down because it's a copyright claim. And she's like, you're not. Yes, yeah, it is a long time. So ask yourself why I walked out of a marriage after 33 years with nothing. I left with nothing. So just ask yourself that. Why did I have to leave in my senior years? Why, why, why? Ask yourself. So there was a choice I made. She must want John. That's probably it. She's probably one of his relatives. I don't know. Hiding under that ugly face. Anyway, yeah, it's, it is. It's some fucking stupid bitch. Anyway, so I, at four o'clock in the morning, got home. So I literally, yeah, she does live in LA. I may show up at her house. I may show up at her house. I may show up at her house. And then she can say that shit to my face. But I can't be bothered, quite frankly, because I think she's mentally ill. Like, I feel sorry for her because I think she's mentally ill. So she's like, um, <laughs> take you, <laughs> Ashley and I, two bitches, we show up. We're like, bitch, I do yoga and I meditate. Bitch, you want to fight? <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, I had to pull. I know, she's totally bored. But anyway, she's like, she deleted her video. First of all, I did not delete my video. I put it on private because I just didn't want to put it out there. I did it in the live stream, but it's my choice, right? Because it's my channel. And she's like, people, if she wants, John, let her have them. Exactly. I don't know that he knows her. I'm being facetious with that. But I'm like, I'm going to... No, it's not her business. And they're like, lost soul, would, we would never waste our time. I know. It's just really funny. I told her on her thing. I'm like, you're a see you next Tegan. No, I just called YouTube. I called YouTube, whatever, messaged them. And I said, my name and likeness, she, not likeness, whatever. It's a copyright infringement. This is my video. You can't just go fucking putting it up there and like blah, blahing. No, 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 no. She tagged deep secrets. I know. Well, there is no deep secrets. It's not a secret here. I got a divorce after 33 years. But actually, I just walked out of my marriage and left everything there. So my Keithy and my Jason would have a home and their father would have a home. And then my Keithy died. We know the story. We know the story. We're bored with the story, right? So she is a matted troll, right? She's a fucking matted troll. 
So, I know I love my tattoos too. So anyway, because um, <laughs> she's mentally ill. You know, she's like, uh, her eyes are like this. Anyway, so YouTube does not, like, you're not allowed to. Oh my God, thank you. Happy stupid homework holiday. Thank you, Tracy, so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, so I'm going to tell you about last night. But anyway, YouTube took the video down on her part. So the video is gone because you can't just put somebody else's video up there. Like, who are you? Who are you? Like, what? Why don't you take J-Lo's video and put it up as your own and make fun of J-Lo on your channel? Like, you have two-minute videos. Anyway, what that is, what that is, thank you so much. Yeah, she's <laughs> trifling. She's a trifling see you next Tuesday. C. Tegan. And I also literally... And so we're at dinner, so I'm telling John, right? So never, <laughs> so I'm telling John at dinner. I went for John at dinner. He bought me beautiful flowers. I thought, you know what? I'll go out with my baby daddy for um, whatever this holiday is. I don't know where. <laughs> anyway, so I went out for dinner with John. We almost get into a fist fight at dinner. Well, it's me. I want to punch him in the face. Oh my God. So anyway, um, we're talking about some weird woman on here with the video. She just took my video. Thank you so much. Aw, thank you. Thank you for that, you guys. You guys are very generous. Thank you for that. She put it back up. I reported her. She put it back up. Did she put it back up right now? I'm gonna look at this bitches. <laughs> this bitches. I blocked her on my thing, so I have to wait. No, I put a strike out there, so they will check. But here's the thing. I know Eric is darling. Thank you so much for that. And Tracy, thank you so much for that. I'm not even going to mention her name. I don't even care. My point is, she's a see you next Tegan. And this is part of the beast system. They're chaos causers. So they want to take, I could take John Easley. Well, I don't want to take him, but um, she took my video because she wanted to prove that I was a bad person by not putting it up and deleting it, but I didn't delete it, I put it private because I went bananas talking, okay? So sometimes I have to edit myself and it's my right, right? So it's literally my right, right? It's just my right to put the video. I don't have to, wow, I lost you as soon as I got. Yeah, so anyway, um, that's what I did. Well, you just report it either way. Yeah, either way it's my video and I said it out loud and then I took it back. Well, I didn't take it back. I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I vented. You guys were so generous to listen to me, and that was really nice. But maybe, you know, for my kids, I'll just take it down right now before I went bananas. But she didn't even put that part up. She put the part up about Keith on the ground in the corner. So she was trying to be a fucking bitch. So anyway, and then she reported me for swearing, which is never going to stop because I don't think, thank you, Model bone structure. That's what she didn't like either. Because she's crazy. Anyway, she's a crazy troll. A troll. A matted headed troll. Anyway, <laughs> hi Mindy. So I know, right? It was, well, it wasn't me. You guys told me. I was out on the hooker track, which is drama. Okay. She hates unicorns. Yes. What's wrong? I hate unicorns. She, she also came to my channel. Fuck her, Ashley. Knock the shit out of her. She goes, she hates Leos. Oh, she's probably the one that said, how you come you're a Leo. Um, whatever. Anyway, so I want to show you this, but here's what I have to tell you. So I go to dinner with John and we're beautiful flowers. He buys me so nice, right? So nice. Beautiful flowers. We go to dinner. We go to our restaurant, but I can feel something underneath. This is my problem. This is my problem my entire marriage. My entire marriage. Thank you, thank you, Mindy. This is my problem. If I sit down with you, I'm very aware. My eyes twitching. Do you see this? My eyes twitching. I'm very aware of the undercurrent of emotion, like when you're going to go off on me. This comes, and all of you might know. Uh, he wants something. He wants the JJ and the boobies. Okay. So anyway, I mean, he's the husband, but we can't make it to that because we'll end up beating each other, or he's guilty of something. I can't figure out what. But anyway, um, the problem is <laughs> that, well, he's my, you know, 33 years. Anyway, the, the problem is when I feel an undercurrent of something, and you guys know this from going up in an alcoholic home or a drug addicted home with an addict or an alcoholic, there's an undercurrent of something under there and something about me, okay, 
something about me freaks out when you're drunk or when you're an addict. It, it freaks me out. I get anxiety and then I want to fight you. And this is my trigger. It's an undercurrent. So if some, and I can feel the energy. I feel it's the energy, okay? I feel that something's going to go off. So my fists are out. That's it. I'm scrappy pappy. I will fuck you up, right? I will fight you first. You're not going to take me over with your alcoholism or your drugs. I'm not even saying that's what was going on. Anyway, so we go for dinner and somehow we're talking about mass. This almost ends up, but he has to talk about, you know, uh, at his, uh, grandkids school, they don't wear masks It's a private school. And I said, it is, it's a trauma response to drunk energy and addicts, which interesting. Anyway, so he's saying, you know, a private school. And I'm like, yes, he can still get it up. I mean, I'm not going to put that out there, but yeah, I, do you guys think men in their seventies can't? So yeah, men in their seventies can. <laughs> oh no, he's my husband. He's my kid's father. So anyway, yeah, the masks trigger me. So if you're telling me money matters and you don't have to wear a mask because you're precious and you have money over here, then because John is a type of person that always said people with a lot of money, they're going to get their monies robbed and taken because they don't share. It's not equal across the board, right? We used to disagree on this. He used to say those rich people, like really rich people, are going to get their asses kicked when the people come and take the money from them, except when it comes to his family, then they're precious, right? So he goes, we get into the, we get into the mask issue. Okay. That's one thing. So thank you so much. Oh my God, Tasmania. Thank you. Oh my God. Thank you so much. So anyway, we get into it and I said, well, if your family members don't have to wear masks, why aren't they standing up for the kids? Because he's saying it's abusive to kids, which is, okay? Um, yeah, it doesn't go away. That's what I'm saying. A dick doesn't go away. I mean, unless you're really addicted, right? Like you're a real addict and you're fucked up at the time. And I've had young men who couldn't get it up, like as a teenager. And I was like, wow, too much drugs, dude. And you're gay. But that's besides the point. Um, anyway, um, so we get into the mask argument and then... Here's the problem. No, we don't. I can't not argue. I said, I can't be around you. I can't fucking be around you. You trigger me every single thing you do. And I don't, I, I sound like the, I may be mentally ill at this point after 30 years, I think I'm fucking mentally ill. So, um, anyway, the masked kids, I said, your people who don't wear masks should be going and helping others kids with the masks. And he's like, well, you know, the parent and, and, and like that. And I'm like, well, fuck them too then if they're not going to do it. Anyway, um, he goes, well, they, and then this is what triggers me. Well, they can wear a mask if they want to. No, no, they can't go to school and wear a mask if they want to because it's slavery. And that's what I believe. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, so he's sitting there and he goes, he's talking and he's like, yeah, he goes, you know, we're talking about a friend of Keith. And so, Oh my God, of course I'm still carrying, of course I'm still carrying anger. But this just happened 20 minutes ago. So anyway, we're talking about Key's friends. And it is child abuse. And he's like, that kid doesn't have a real job. I'm like, what do you mean? He makes a shit ton of money on the computer, right? And he's like, that's not a real job. That's not a real job. He stays at home on the computer. And I'm like, do I have a real job? He goes, well, you couldn't really do a real job. So my kids used to say that to me, okay? My kids used to say, I argue with him in public all the time. My kids used to say, you don't have a real job to me. And I was wondering where they heard it. And then I told you the Nordstrom st story. I was 21 when I worked at Nordstrom's. And apparently, apparently, John told the his first son, Jimmy, no, it is so stupid, told Jimmy, Let's make a bet on how Sloan lasts, how long Sloan lasts at Nordstrom's. I'm literally talking 30, how old am I? 34 years ago. So he enlisted his son, who was my age at the time, 11 months younger, so they could both bet against me because it's always nice to make you feel your much younger girlfriend feel like shit that she can't keep a job at Nordstrom's. Yes. So here's what I said. Now I know why fucking Jason mentioned it to me. He goes, oh, I didn't say anything to Jason. I said, I just fucking had that Nordstrom's conversation. They say to me, you didn't last but a day at Nordstrom's. Okay, I'm going to just settle this for the record. 
Two weeks of computer training. I went one day on the floor. They asked me to carry boxes up from the basement in my high heels that they told me to wear. And I was like, I would rather die than do this job. I'm not doing this job. I'm not doing this job. So I fucking quit. And I'm hearing about it 34 years later at fucking dinner about, and then I said, but I worked at the fucking money tree, right? Oh yeah, this woman's going to have me, whatever. So I worked at the money tree in Toluca Lake and John's like, for four hours a day, I mean. And I said, listen, buddy, you stated a job that you hated for 50 years and you justified it and made us all fucking live with a job that you said you hated every day. You employed all three of your sons to work there and they all hated it. And you employed other people and they hated it. Shut up. And so I said to him, bitch, if you could make money in your pajamas on your phone, you would. And I did work eight hours a day in the strip club. You want to tell me that's not business? I'm sober. I'm in six inch heels and a G-string with a bra. It's work. And I had to sit on, ew, chairs, but I put my towel down. Ugh. Because, you know, whatever. Biatch. Anyway, the money tree, it was Lucy's 54, the money tree. It was the money tree, um... It was a famous place. It's where I told you I saw Columbo in there every day at lunch. But the lunch shift was four hours. So shoot me. If I make $200 in tips at lunch, why do I have to work more than four hours? Why do I have to work more than four? I know he's jealous. I said, you jealous? And the cute little Melissa, when we walked into Caruso, she's like, she was walking to, no, he has no respect for me whatsoever. He thinks I'm a piece of shit. Um, anyway, I worked, <laughs> I walked in, in and Melissa was there and She's so cute. Anyway, she's looking at me and I'm like, why isn't she saying hi? And she went to school um, with Keithy. Anyway, so she's there and she's like, oh my God, you look so cute. Your hair looks so whatever cute. Oh, this is what started the argument. Okay. I know I have to, he's so sexist. Um, <laughs> he's so, but my son, Jason said this to me. Yeah. Why give home? Why give home your time? Wait, why? Oh, him your time. I'm not giving him my time anymore. I Because we have a dead son, which he says my kids talk badly. And he tried to say Jason talked badly about me. And I said, why would Jason be talking badly? You should hear what he says. Remember how you used to call me at work? Yes, I did call you at work. That's exact before I had kids and you were doing cocaine and drinking. Yeah, we used to get into fucking rankous arguments. Exactly. Oh, big time. Anyway, apparently my job isn't a job and I couldn't really work a job even though I work like 10 hours a day. So whatever, like all, are all you computer geeks working? Ashley's got a job. She does yoga. Does she get paid? Yeah. When she has clients, she gets paid. So it's a fucking job, right? Does the lady selling flowers on the side of the street get paid? Then it's a job. Um, <laughs> there's that. I mean, oh my God. Yeah. He's, he's going, well, you couldn't do Jason's job. And I'm like, um, yeah. Jason rig does rigging for the studio and climbs up 300 feet. First of all, I can't get off the side of the mountain and <laughs> do that. I'm afraid of heights and I can't lift 200 pounds. No, only to his daughter is being a wife and a mama job. To me, he said I didn't do as much as his daughter. So you know who he really, you know, whatever. Anyway, we get into this argument back and forth. So to the woman who steals my videos, please report this and send it to him. Oh, he loves to fight with me, but he's not going to do it. I, I didn't let him come in the house. I'm like, get out, get out. Cause I got to do my non job right now. Oh, it's so, I know really, you don't really have, um, yeah, he pushed, yeah, he pushed my sons, my sons. I said, why, why are you mentioning Nordstrom's? Why are you fucking mentioning Nordstrom's 34 years later? Cause I've heard it twice and he's, and then he blames Alvarado his employee. He's like, well, I'm sure Alvarado told Jason. I'm like, Alvarado was 16 when I met him. And he didn't know me when I worked at Nordstrom's unless you weirdos are at a machine shop talking about me working at Nordstrom's for one day after I trained because I decided I didn't want to do it because I'd rather die. And I also decided when he put me in his bar in his restaurant, I didn't want to do his grunt work either. So I did my own work. Got it? And so, yeah, anyway, uh, I'm sure Alvarado actually called Jason last week and said, you know, your mom fucked up at Nordstrom's. I didn't fuck up. I walked like, you know, whatever. Um, <laughs> so that, no, I'm fine. I just said like, please, please. No, this is how he always has been. 
I just didn't, yes, let the narc go. Exactly. But you know how you feel like the narc? So, okay, now that's that rant, right? Um, <laughs> he is a narcissist. He's a fucking alcoholic narcissist. Do you know, I can't even tell you what Keith said to me a week before he crossed over. And you know, it was interesting. I walked in the house and he it was hell to be married to him. It was hell. His family was hell. They were hell. I didn't enjoy it, I, you know, but yet I don't know. It's 33 years, right? But it was hell. Um, not everybody, not Jimmy. Jimmy was darling. Um, John will be 76 in a month. So Jimmy was darling. Uh, and it's too bad he overdosed. But, you know, um, when I look back on it, somebody tried to steal his energy. Yeah, he always makes me seem, I seem crazy. I seem crazy. I seem crazy. Um, yeah, he's probably, he's, you know, John's, yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, no, he was this way before I left. He was, yeah, I go crazy around alcoholics. Like, I want to gouge their eyes out. Here's why. Did you just, report, did she put it up again? He hates women. He hates his mother. He didn't talk well to his mother. This is a true story. He says he loved her. I'm messaging you the info. Thank you. Yeah, where are you messaging me on my, um, she did it again. This woman did it again. She put it up again because I took, he can watch all he wants. He hated his mother. He told her to fuck off and screamed at her in her face too. Um, and she said shit to my kids. I found out after she, he, it's fine if he records it. This is a true story. This just happened at dinner. This just happened at dinner. He literally said, I, I don't know how to work. He literally said I couldn't hold a job. Here's the thing. I have a job. I read people. I do charts. And I do live streams. And I walk the hooker track at night. Not all the time. Only when Lori asks me. So thank you towards my paycheck. Thank you. So I do that. And I work all day long. I exercise. I do things for people. This is what I do. This is what I do, okay? I'm constantly doing stuff. So I, I, you know, I feel it, but, you know, whatever. I mean, does Tucker Carlson have a job? Oh, very dysfunctional. Very dysfunctional. And I climb mountains too. I'm a strong ass bitch. Even though I went through the desert, you know, the incident. And then, oh my God. So my friend texts me um, and I do, I have helped. Do you know the last little girl that... Um, Anyway, I'll make a name for her. Anyway, she was at Lori's shelter and she was one of my client's daughters. And I was trying to help her because she was Keith's age and she was a Sag, like Keith. She's a day after Keithy. Anyway, she's a lovely girl. And I was so, um, I knew her mother a long time. Her mother was a client a long time. And yeah, he wants alimony. That's right. And so anyway, I knew her mother and when I came home, so I would go to the shelter and I would hang out with her. And when she was relapsing, I felt really bad because I knew her mother. And really, truthfully, the reason I, and I'm going to tell you guys the truth, but this is true when you see people who give. My boys did not want to be around me. You know, they're young men. They got their stuff. So they, they were in and out of the house and I missed my children. So I don't really find any value in anything other than having my children. Okay, so unfortunately, due to the fighting and the war zone that my kids grew up under, which was addiction and alcoholism, which Lori pointed out to me last night, I was describing something to her and she's like, oh my God, I have anxiety. <laughs> she said, and she said to me, you've been living with an addict. And I didn't realize the level of addiction that this man had. I mean, when he stole my my pills, right? My, my after surgery, what do you call them? The Oxycontins and denied doing it and then mocked me for it for asking for them back because I don't use them. That is an addiction, right? So anyway, long story short, this little girl that was at Lori's, I got her, I got her to Lori's and then she relapsed and she was in and out. So when she was coming off the drugs, I would go and God gave me, God gave me these talents. I was born this way. I can't help it. I'm sorry. I apologize for being me and for fighting back. I'm going to fight you back. If you say some shit, I'm going to fight you back. I'm a fire sign. If I feel like you're coming after me, I can feel it. So I'm going to fucking do it. Period. Um, yeah, he did after I had the surgery. Anyway, not this is a whole other thing and then denied it. But I saw him bringing them in the house on my camera. He goes, no, they're right here in the drawer. So addicts always help you find things that they fucking take from you, right? So Lori taught me that last night. I'm so stupid. I've been living with a fucking major addict for years. Had no idea. Never been, so I know he's never been sober, but um, 
Bobby, I was going to call you, but you were at lunch with Lucas, Bobby. I love Bobby. I got to call you after too. I talked to the lawyers, but I'll, I will text you after this and tell you because I'm on my thing. But anyway, this little girl that was in the rehab, right? Um, so an ashy turn. Aw, thank you. Wolfie, thank you. Ashley, I love so much. I love her like she's my sister. Um, I'm not going to go out with John anymore. <laughs> I can't. I'm going to I'm gonna get arrested for socking him one. But uh, wondering the attic gas. Yeah, that, that's that. Yeah, this. he's a full-blown attic. Lori pointed something out to me. And yeah, he had a bar and a restaurant. He had several bars and restaurants. He had his mother working in them. He never worked in them, but you know, whatever. Um, I'm banned. It, it's He's the father of my kids. You know how hard it is. And Bobby talks to me all the time about it. But I know, sister, right, Ashley? Oh my God, total. We were out on the track. I've got to tell you about that. No, I love you more, honey. I love you more. Um, but okay, so this little girl was in freehab with Lori. That was my client's daughter. And she... Um, she relapsed. So I went to go there and talk to her when they got her back into the shelter. And she and I were talking and she was high as a kite. And I'm like, you have to stay in here. You have to get better. She's sober now and she's working now. So I got home late that night because I really, as much as I complained about my kids driving me nuts, I literally didn't know what to do with myself when they had their own lives. And when my Keithy, you know, when Keithy was, um, they were doing their guy things. So I just was like, I, I don't know. I miss my boys and really my purpose was my boys. I didn't do it well, but I really am not interested. Like if I don't have my kids around me, I'm not, you know, oh, he messed them up. Yeah. I was only, oh my God. Uh, he would have, yeah. See, both my kids hated me in that house, both of them. And he said something, anyway, not the point. Um, When I came home from Lori's shelter, we went out for dinner at this little Chinese place because I was starving. He'd already eaten, but I was starving. It was about 7.30 at night. And he said, you give those kids more attention than me. And I'm like, you're fucking an adult. This kid is fucking going off the rails. I'm not going to give you attention like that. I just bought you dinner and wine. I am not giving you any more attention. Like he wanted the attention or he commented like that. So I, you know, looking back on it, the things that he said to me, um, yeah, oh yeah, my boys, I mean, obviously Jason's bitching about Nordstrom's 34 years later. He wasn't born. Um, oh, look, he's texting me. You have a real job. I just don't want to continue talking about nothing. <laughs> I threatened to cut him off the car insurance. That's why he's texting me back. So, um, <laughs> or he's watching this. Anyway, um, 34 years later, I said to Jason, I don't have to fucking work at Nordstrom's. What's like, I'm sorry, I made an executive decision that I'm not going to work at something I don't want to do. I'm not going to fucking stay at my work and do something I don't fucking want to do in my life, right? Of course he's watching. He just texted. Fuck you, John. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> so that that little see you next, Tegan can write it. But anyway, so getting back to Lori, let's talk about that. I want to show you something. So look at this, y'all. Look at this. Um, so Lori calls me and she says, you know, you want to go down to the hook, the hooker track down in um, Inglewood. I go. So Lori's like, I know, but we're going to go down there. We're going to try to do stuff. She's just trying to get the word out about her new, um, it's an executive decision. Yeah. So Lori's trying to get the word out, right? So anyway, we're going, um, this is what we were carrying. It was me and Lori and Phoenix. Phoenix is a year younger than Jason, and I met her at Freehab, and she was one of the girls that came off the street. And I have to tell you, she is so lovely. She is such a beautiful young woman. She was a beautiful young woman when she was working on the streets, and she should have never been working on the streets. She knows astrology. I love it because when I would go to Lori's shelter, these kids love crystals and astrology. So we have something to talk about, right? Anyway, beautiful Phoenix. That's her name now. And do you think, I told you Bob Saget was killed. <laughs> I think I said it. Um, anyway, beautiful um, Phoenix. When I, I haven't seen her in a couple of years. She just disappeared off my social media. And so anyway, Lori said she's going to be there. I'm like, where... Yes, I'm going to tell you all about Lori's stuff. So Phoenix, she's so lovely. Okay, her sign is Pisces, Scorpio Moon, 
and cancer rising. Anyway, when I saw her there, she's such a lovely young woman. Like, there's not a trace of... She's done so much work for her young age. She's 28. She's done so much work, so much work. And she's tall. She's beautiful. She's got a, quote, straight job now. And I just was happy to see her and Lori together, right? So really, really happy to see them together. So she comes out. I give her a hug. I'm like, she's so cute. So this is her old neighborhood where she used to work. Lori was trafficked. And we know that I was a stripper, okay? I wasn't trafficked. I just was a runaway at 14 and had to make money and decided to do it the way that I did it, right? Yeah, she's all water, that girl. And she's real smart and she's good. So she's like, she did not take her phone on the street with us. So, and I'm sweating now. So off comes my shirt, y'all. Sorry. Now I'm doing a strip tease, but I am sweating. Sorry. It's super hot in here. I apologize. That was my restaurant shirt because the restaurant always has the air conditioner on. So anyway, um... Phoenix is so lovely, and <laughs> I just did a strip tease really uneloquent, elo eloquently. So we're there. So what happened is we had Marines, special ops. Lori calls them special ops, right? So special ops. We had two huge cars, two huge SUVs, one behind us and one in front of us. And then one of the special ops Marines, four special ops, four. I go, there's eight, four. And there's five, no, four, special ops. So there were, I met them. I went to the hotel. Everyone take your shirt off. So I went to the hotel and, Lori, you know, met Lori, met up with Phoenix, and then the guys from the Marines. And Annie, her assistant, and um, Crystal didn't come. But anyway, it doesn't matter. And so they're staying in another house, but they came over to the hotel. So we made a plan as if, if something happens and a pimp gets us, because remember, we're white girls, on a predominantly black track. And even Phoenix is like, this is sketchy out here. Sketchy, sketchy, right? Yeah, it's, it's huge. However, Saturday night was like a delicatessen, everybody down the street. Sunday was less. I mean, it was almost non-existent, but there were some out there. Anyway, so special ops, what they do is we keep in radio contact. We go out on the streets. We either look like cops or church people, something like this whatever. We look like two white women, two old white women out in the street. And then there's cute Phoenix walking with us. But anyhow, they have the truck behind and the truck in front. It's actually really smart. So one of the guys gets out on the street. Super Bowl's always rigged. All of these things are rigged. One of the guys get out on the street and they walk you, they walk behind you, you know, they, they, they shadow you. So if somebody comes up on you, and you know whatever right someone comes up on you they're right there they're they're armed and all of that and they can if you need help with a girl they can pull the car right up so one is always in front of you one is always behind you cars i'm talking about and so we had a meet up and everything special ops marines the special ops yeah no it was eat your how to i know they were cute and young and well one was a couple of years younger than me but the other ones were younger so 40s, you know, like that. And they're, um, yeah, no, it's great. Lori does great work. And they give up their weekend time to come. And they all, um, they do, I'm going to show you some of the stuff. But I want to talk about Lori's stuff first and one of the other groups I was with. But they all have their jobs. Like one was construction. Um, one was working in demolition and firearms. I, I don't know if I'm wording it right. China Lake out there. So they're all military and they're special ops. So they come in to help with people. And I'm sure Lori will call them again and you know, it will happen because she's opening a new system. So that's what we did. That's what we did, right? So we pull up to Manchester in like 81st, 82nd, something. And there's a huge line out of sight of Church's Chicken. I don't even know what it is, but there it is. Anyway, so I got to leave all my stuff in the car. Like, oh, I'm only carrying my phone. Lori has the earpiece so she can communicate with them. And it's the three of us. So we're walking down the street and we have these. Okay, so I know you're going to go, what is this? So Lori hands these out to the girls. She's like, y'all want mirrors, right? So look, this is this is, this is is what she had made. So I, I know you're looking at it like, why are you giving girls on the street this? So let me show you. She opens it up because remember, their pimps are watching. 
their people are watching, right? So you can't church's chicken. <laughs> I've never eaten fucking church's chicken. But anyway, so you open it up. I want to show you this, okay? So she has a new app. So you don't want the pimp to see them give you um, a card or whatever because he's going to come and pull you in, right? So you just want to think that you're like giving them a mirror, you know, to look. So look, it's a mirror. So Lori's like, look, there's a mirror. She loves saying there's a close-up mirror and a faraway mirror. Yes, it's a compact, Lori. Phoenix was cracking up. Look on the inside of the mirror. So when a pimp comes up, right, he sees a mirror or a trick or whoever is watching her, right? Nobody last night, we just gave out the mirror. So look at this. So here's this. So I want you all to look at this. So just, and what we say is, and I want you to hear this. So I'm gonna see, I'm gonna put more of these out. I know, but look, there's a QR code here. So what we say is, if you see a young girl on the street who needs help, understand there's seasoned women and they're out there and it's not a choice because they're coming from sexual abuse. Um, if you, uh, this is what I believe, okay, no matter what anyone says, same for strippers. Anyway, when you go like this, there is a QR code, right? So you, like, you know how you go into a restaurant? Okay, so I can't really, so you push the QR code. We don't want to put the website up there because we don't want the pimps to hack it, basically. You click on the code and it opens up. So it opens up to this. Can you see this? Safe site, right? So it says find your location. So I'm just going to put Sunland here. So I'm going to show you, or yeah, Sunland. So when it opens up, now that's off the QR code, okay? So scan it like you do a restaurant. So all the girls got phones, right? So look, somebody's got phones. So if you find a young girl, you see, so that's why we give them the compact. It's like we're, we're do-gooders and they're just like, oh, the bitch got a compact, right? Who cares? That's what it, so right there is the QR code. So you click it. So then you've got male, female, or other, because it could be yeah, other, right? So I click female and I clicked 18 to 26. Not really. But anyway, I click that and, ser and then it has services and special needs. Like, let's say you can't hear, let's say you're on the spectrum, whatever. So then you click search. So then it starts searching and it gives you a list of shelters. Now these are Lori's shelters. She has several throughout the valley. So it tells you how many beds are open. So um, we have the Teen Project College House. Six beds are available. Freehab has 74. The Crisis Treatment Center has 16. So then let's click the Crisis Center. So the girl, she's clicked this on her phone, right? And then she fills out her name, whatever name. Doesn't matter what the name is. You can put Sally Smith. And then she puts a phone number and this and that. And when she puts book now, it's at no cost to her. She, she clicks book now. And when she books now, the Uber is sent to her location and she goes to that bed. So that would be at the crisis center and there's 16 beds. So this is what we hand out. Now let's see, we tell the girls, now this is at Lori's instruction. I didn't do this, Lori did this. I just went with her because I just like hanging out with her. We're two blonde ladies and we get along. It's like we're, we're separated. Ashley, she's one of us. So the other thing that I was doing and that she was doing, she has posters for safe site. Um, she has posters. So I was sticking these in all the bathroom. These are the QR codes. And I took a Sharpie so I can write on the wall if you need help. Because remember, when the girls are trafficked in the hotels, sometimes they go through the hotels into the bathroom. This happened in Vegas. This happened in Vegas. And I used to hand them out cards when I worked. Yes, Lori does it. And she's opening up Children of the Night where I worked 30 something years ago. Anyway, and I'm going to work there again. I worked with the kids. That was the happiest I've ever been in my life because I feel like I'm doing something when I do that. I had my kids, both my boys were my belly when I did that. And then Jimmy died, so I quit, as you know. And then I hooked up with Lori again after that. So this is, this is, um, this is also the code and it's a sticker. So we put it on bus stops, you know, garbage bins, because you know someone will see it, they'll get the word, right? And then Lori had big posters for inside the hotel lobby. So then we hit the hotels. Um, the hotels around, you know, the whatever, Super Bowl, uh, the, the crack house hotels and the whatever. So there's that. Now, the other thing, when you go, when you want to find out about Lori's site, she's always looking for clothing donations because these girls come off the streets with no clothes. And the re, and this is what I wanted to ask. Damn it. It's A, B. Oh, I forget the law. Okay. So this is what she was telling me last night. So, Lori, the reason that she started this, 
is she can tell her story, but I'm just briefly telling you. The reason she started this, right, is because she was a foster kid. She ended up on the streets as a prostitute because from 18 to 21, you're supposed to remain in the foster care system, but they don't. They boot you out at 18. So what do you do at 18? And there's a grant, at least in Los Angeles, there's some kind of, no, there's a grant in the United States. I forget the name of it. I meant to ask her. Anyway, from 18 to 21, you should be able to get this money, but only, only if you have a job, if you're in school full time, and if you own your own apartment. Well, you're 18, you've been in a foster home, you're probably getting the shit kicked out of you or getting raped or whatever. You're getting out of the foster care. This is CPS. If you try to appeal it, it's all CPS. But here's the kicker. This is what we want you guys to talk about. And this is what I said. Did you know, so say you're 12. I first went into foster care at 13. I was in foster care at birth, okay? I was in an orphanage or a child, whatever, it, at birth. Then I got adopted, and at age 12, I became the war, a ward of the court again. So my parents sent me back into the foster care system, and I became a ward of the court. By the time I turned 14, I bailed, okay? After already calling social services on them, etc. Because you know me, I'm going to call the police on your ass. But anyway, um, having said that, having said that, when you go through foster care, 13, you're there from 13 to 18, but you're supposed to be in until 21. So did you know, did you know, if you are a foster child, they do not put an Amber Alert on you. So me as a 13, <laughs> yeah, John's relieved we're not talking about him. Did you know as a 13-year-old, if you run away from your foster home, they do not put an Amber Alert on you. CPS does not put an Amber Alert. Lori found this out when she was in court with another woman and the woman said, yeah, we, we don't because they do not want you to know how many foster kids go missing while they're getting donations from you. This is a law we need to change. No, it is true. This is a law we need to, I did not know that. I, yes, because they traffic you exactly, but they don't because once you go into the foster care system, and as Lori said, when she opens her shelters, she's inspected. They can walk in at any time. They can go through the kitchen. They can go through the bedrooms. They can interview the staff. They can do anything, right? If she tries to appeal something that they don't like about her, no matter a lawyer she gets, she got a Stanford lawyer she was telling me. I think she said that, whatever. Still, the CPS lawyers are at the top of the chain. Like, you're not going to get anywhere with them. You're not, you're going to get, you're just not going to get anywhere. That's why you hear of those two little boys out in the desert, Orin and um, Orson, and they go missing. They're in foster care. Somehow we heard about that, and I don't know what that is, why we heard about it, but we did. But they do not file Amber Alerts on those kids. So we need to change those laws. And Lori and I were talking about it last night, and even Phoenix was in a foster home, okay? And she was trafficked out of that foster home. Like she was literally pushed onto the street by a foster sister. That's her story. She'll tell one day, but that's her story. She was literally out on the streets. She didn't get money from 18 to 21. They are supposed to have money when they leave foster care at 18. They do not. So they're easy prey for pimps, strippers, uh, you know, theft, whatever. So we need to change that law in the United in the United States. They need to be accounted for because we have kids as young as, shit, I was in foster care when I was in the receiving homes, which is where, when they catch you off the street, when you keep running away and they catch you off the street and you go into a receiving home till the judge, till you get to court. I was in foster care with kids that were eight years old. Now, if that eight-year-old goes missing, where is that eight-year-old? Where is that fucking eight-year-old? Where does he go? Because he's there, we're not going to purport it. He's eight. He needs to do that. He needs to do that. So anyway, I think Lori's going to find out from the woman in Arizona how to do it. And then when she finds out how to do it, like how that woman got the law changed in Arizona, then I'm going to bring this back here to you so you can do it, right? Of course, they pay the homeless 600 a month. But if you're a foster kid, fuck you. And it's so interesting. The special ops guys um, were saying that the foster kids, okay, so the foster kids, 
they were saying they're a commodity and they're traffic. So it's, I mean, the, they know this. It's not a secret to them, right? Not a secret. So if you go to the teenproject.com, that's Lori's website and it'll show you all of her other sites. She has Vera Sanctuary, Freehab, um, and there's a couple of other houses and I don't know the name of them, but she has all of them. And she's just getting my, the old place I used to work, Children of the Night. And if you remember correctly, when I was on Jim Breslow's show talking about Epstein Island, before Epstein was suicided, murdered with the cameras off in the most locked down jail in the country. Anyway, before that happened, right, um, I was talking about it on there and I was talking about how the island was satanic and how all of that stuff. And Lois literally emailed me and said, I can't say I worked for her and to, to, like she was going to put a cease and desist on me. So I blocked her. Meanwhile, she moves out of Children of the Night back then and she moves into, into an office building next to Vivid Entertainment. So she has an office building there. She hasn't had Children of the Night. The property's been sitting there. Somebody else bought it. That property's been sitting there. So Lori's scooping it up and then... I'll be back in Van Nuys doing that. So that I'm kind of excited about. That I'm excited about. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I do need a <laughs> I do need a punching bag. But anyway, that's what happened. So let me let me show you. Um, no, the, the whole foster care system is wrong. So let me describe what I saw, okay? Because the pictures are on this this phone. So I ran past, uh, let me see. Well, you know, I think those boys are gone at this point. No, they're never going to arrest them because they picked them to do it and they gaslit the mother and blamed her. Um, yeah, she, then your cousin in Van Nuys knows we're on Sylvan Street across from the courthouse where Children of the Night was. It was a staple there since the late 70s. It used to be a post office. Lois bought it. It became Children of the Night. Um, team, teen, teen, T-E-E-N, uh, teen project. Um yeah. So anyway, I enjoyed it. I, my kids were little. I went and worked with other kids, but I still came home. You know, I came home to my kids and my kids took care of other kids. So it's just the way it is. But yeah, so Lori is getting ready to redo. Um, and again, keep in mind, she has a corporation, not a corporation, a board behind her. And it, it was the main, yeah, it was the main post office until 79, I think. Right. So Lori's great. Now here's the funny thing. So Lori and I are talking and she's like, we're so much alike. And I'm like, well, how much coffee do you drink in the morning? She's like four shots of espresso. I'm like, me too. And then, you know, um, <laughs> Phoenix is like, I hate caffeine. And we're all like, what? Anyway, um, the teen, yeah, teen project, like teenagers, teenproject.com. Lori Burns. So look it up. But here's the thing. Kitty's on the chair. She's sleeping on the chair. So when you're looking at these girls, and I kid you the fuck not, I kid you, kid you the hell not, they're out on the street and they wear literally G-strings. I mean, strings. So, strings. Strings. Or, you remember those 80s fishnet tops and stuff? Uh, coffee's the only thing that's getting me out of bed you know, that's, that's the only thing too. So they are wearing strings on the street. So Mayor Garcetti, and here's the thing that Lori saw that I didn't see because I wasn't out with them that night. They were there for the week prior. But here's the other thing. All of the lights going down the hooker track, I mean, I'm going to call it that, down the street, all the side streets, the cars line up, the cars line up, the cars line up. All the lights coordinate and stay yellow freezing in heels. They stay yellow so that the girls can pick up or the guys can pick up their traffic. The girls can work. The city is aware if they were smart, they would have that block go yellow, red, green. So like cars couldn't stop, stop, start, start, right? Whatever. So they are wearing literally G strings. They are wearing with things with their asses hanging out. They are wearing those, uh, flesh top, whatever, knit tops, like uh, see-through tops that I wear like these under. And they're just like, you know, just wearing that, right? So it's, it's fascinating to me. Men are buying these women. Men are buying these women. Men are buying these women. Somewhere in our society that we have abused children so much 
that these girls are out on the street. These are predominantly black women in this area, young ladies and black women. And when I was talking to Phoenix, what struck me, because she's so articulate, she's funny, she's smart. She's like, I've always enjoyed that girl. I've always enjoyed her. I like when she was first in Lori's, when she was, I mean, she is a good kid and I just always liked her. But it's interesting. She said at the time she was working, now I'm speaking for her, and she said at the time she was working, she did not think she had any other option. We need to change these girls from thinking that they have no other option. They are taught that. They are taught that in foster care. They are taught that in religious homes. They are taught that in homes with money. They are taught that all over the place. And we have a whole city where they're just like, the girls are trying to make money. These girls are literally out walking up and down the street wearing G-strings, okay? They are freezing. They are freezing. They are wearing, what did you say? Please don't just, okay, don't be rude. She's the most articulate young woman. She is so lovely, Phoenix, and I am so fucking proud of her, okay? I am so proud of her. She has done amazing. She's come out of that and she can see it. And Lori Burns is phenomenal. Lori is fantastic. And she's, she's the Lori Burns, that girl, Lori Burns on Instagram. And she's the teen project on Facebook and Lori Burns. She is amazing Phoenix. Okay. And Lori. And so here's the thing. And Jason needs to call his mother. Exactly. But here's the thing. Okay. Uh, that, yeah. Well, I, lo I love it. No, I, 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 I don't know why I love it. I, I mean, you know why? I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Because it irritates the living shit of Phoenix. Yes, she rises from the ashes. I knew her under a different name. She wants to change her name to Phoenix. She should be Phoenix, okay? She should be Phoenix. Anyway, she, the girls I've met at Lori's shelter, some of them come from such fucking horrific stories. You have no idea in foster care. And the level of abuse that's done to them, um, one girl, and I'll never forget this, Lori called me, shit, I guess it has to be five or six, six years ago. And there was a girl named Shayna. I'm going to use her name. Anyway, her sister was at Lori's and Lori called me and said that the girl's sister, Shayna, was in the hospital in a different state. And I think it was a drug overdose at the time and something happened with her organs. And I was driving, so I pulled my car over because Lori said the, the family has her on life support and they want to know if it's okay to pull the plug. And this is the first time. So Lori's opened my world up to be able to deal with things on a level that's a little bit different for me. Um, and it's not something, but I said, sure, I'll try to communicate with her while she's on life support. So as this girl was on life support and her organs were shutting down and her family was trying to decide whether it was okay to pull her off life support, they put me on speakerphone in the hospital and I was speaking to her energy, okay, to her energy as the family was deciding to pull her off life support. And it literally broke my heart. Like after I spoke to them, I hung up the phone and I was literally sobbing. I could hardly drive home. I mean, I was in the car when Lori called me. Obviously, she was on life support, so we had to do it. And so it was extremely difficult, but it was a very interesting experience. So Lori has always thought a lot of psychic people and using our gifts and abilities in ways that are good. And by the way, that girl is psychic as shit. I had to teach her. She's clairsentient. She has clear feelings so, because she does. And she's so psychic herself. This is why she does it. So it's kind of interesting. But I remember doing that. So Lori's opened up my eyes. Now imagine if you got two sisters and two sisters are working the street, one that happens to, and the other one over here, and they get into abusive cycles with men. They get It was so tough. It, I've never done anything like that in my life. And I mean, I don't want to disrespect a family with a dead person dying and the people are like, fuck you, you crazy psychic bitch or whatever. I don't want to ever do harm that way. So I tried to do it the best I could and I don't know if what I got was correct or not. But I know she was okay when she was set free. I did feel that. So I definitely felt that. Um, so that was very, psychics are very 
Oh my God, so helpful. Uh, as I've said, Deanna for me, so helpful, okay, in my life. But I can't really remember. She was okay with letting go. She was actually kind of waiting there till all her family got there. And she, oh God, anyway. There's several times Lori showed up at hospitals with her girls where they've been beaten up or, and she, that's what she said. We we're talking about last night. She literally says, if there's a man that's with these women, that's how they're going to, there's many articulate black people. That's some fucking troll on here. Um, yeah, whatever. Troll, think what you want. Anyway, Lori's truly amazing, but we were cracking. Uh, she's very, Lori's very empathic. But anyway, she's given me opportunity to meet all kinds of different girls and to understand that lifestyle, which is different than my lifestyle because I was in a stripper lifestyle. I had a lot of friends that worked the street in Toronto, okay, a lot of girls, and I dated people male that were male prostitutes. I mean, kids that went out and turned tricks for money. And it never occurred to me that it was a wrong thing at the time. I'm like, they have to make money. So I was as damaged as they were in their thinking. I'm talking when I was really, really young. But, um, you know, <laughs> you can ask. Oh, my God, you people. It doesn't matter what your skin color is. Your IQ is different, you know. So I know trolls are bizarre. It's like whatever. Anyway, Phoenix was out there, and she was like, <laughs> I start wandering off. So Lori's so happy. She's walking down the street, and she's like, hey. <laughs> and she's like, I feel happy. I need to say hi to people. And I'm like, oh. Anyway, we're funny. So I'm like Canadian. I say hi to everybody. Lori's happy. She says hi to everybody. And Phoenix is like, girls, come back here. But we actually saw a pimp wearing like almost like a, a hat in a bright blue suit. Okay. Like literally uh, like a bright, blue, like an old style pimp, you know, like pimp daddy out in the street. We saw him and we saw the girls and we saw the cars pull up. Now, he, I know people are just fucking weird on the street. On this, racist people are bizarre. That's set up by the government. I don't play for that. It doesn't matter. Like when you bleed and you die, like that, just shut up. Anyhow, weird, weirdly, <laughs> screaming pimp. I know, I was like, I walked down the street. I went, I have never seen anybody dress like that except in a movie. And I was like, what the hell? And so anyway, um, this Mercedes pulled up. And of course, Lori and I need glasses. So we think it's the guys, the special ops. And I'm walking towards the Mercedes and Phoenix is like, Sloan, Sloan, back up, back up, <laughs> back up. That's not them. And I'm like, oh shit. And then Lori's like, we, <laughs> we still got it. I'm like, we, you know, we had a carload of pimps go by and they were trying to talk to us. And so we had that. And then we had, um, you know, Mercedes try to pick us up. And so <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> So anyway, yes, female pimps exist. They run the strip clubs, the madams. That's who runs the strip clubs. When you work in, when I was growing up in Toronto and you work at the clubs in Toronto, like the hotels in downtown by the Super Bowl, Beverly Hills, everywhere, they're called madams. And what they do is they sit at the bar and the girls are dressed in nice clothes. The guys come out of the strip clubs. Okay, the guys come out of the strip clubs and they got their hard-ons and all that shit from their fucking in public bullshit. And then the girls at the, the bar strike up a conversation and the guys are like, I want to get laid. And then this is in Toronto. And then the hotels are up above the strip clubs. So there's that. Yeah, madams. And the, and the women run the strip clubs. Strip clubs I worked at. Male bouncers, except for one on Imperial Highway, which I was down there, down by, yeah, Heidi Fleiss, exactly. Anyhow, so yeah, she was, but she's on a lot of drugs right now. I met her. I did a reading for her through Dr. Drew's channel. She has many, many birds in her house. Many, many birds. Okay. Many birds. Yeah. We probably shouldn't have been on the street, but you know what? If you're going to kill me, you're going to kill me. I figure, yeah, it's very predatory. It's very, but it's all business. So this is why they don't, she's very damaged. She's very fucking damaged. By the way, she dated, you guys know, Tom Sizemore. So Tom Sizemore worked with a friend of mine. She has to be demanded on the drugs, but she, Tom Sizemore worked with a friend of mine in Europe. One of my close friends who's a Fox News, she was an actress and a model, but she's a Fox News correspondent right now, um, Republican in Texas, okay? 
So she worked with Tom Sizemore and she got an injury on the set because I don't know, something, I don't know, he did something with the crane. She was up there and it fell and it hurt her. But she said they couldn't pay her whole salary. But yes, he was a meth addict, so was Heidi. But um, she said they couldn't pay her whole salary, but she had to eat. This is her working a movie with Tom Sizemore. She had to eat breakfast to him while he pulled his phone out and went through vagina pictures showing them to her. They brought in hookers for him, but they couldn't pay her whole, um, when he cried on Dr. Drew show. Yeah, they couldn't, they couldn't pay her whole salary, but they could buy him vaginas. And he had close-ups and he kept showing them to my friend. And um, there's that. Oh, the, the meth is just atrocious. We saw one guy run out in the street and I'm like, what is that? And it's meth. So here's another thing I want to mention. One of the special ops guys is from this. It's called savedinamerica.org. Okay. Right. Can you see this? So they go in and they rescue vag over. Oh yeah, exactly. So they go in and they rescue runaways at no cost to the parents. So this is called savedinamerica.org. You guys look it up and decide if it's something you want to do or not. But you understand a lot of these people that have these sexual perversions and it was, it's a card for, well, it probably is. I'm trying to do this. Savedinamerica.org. Okay, so there's that. So what you, do, try that if you want to try that. Um, that's why she started, yeah. Well, her dad was a pediatrician. Like he was a naturalist pediatrician. He worked with my midwife. So he was a natural pediatrician and Heidi grew up with a stepdad. So there's that. Anyway, wait, huge, don't know. Okay, anyway, there's that. So I want to mention that and then go to the teen project. But it's very interesting because we're never going to stop this. It's been going on since the age, you know, whatever. But if your child ends up in the sex industry, okay, if your child ends up in the sex industry, you are going to want someone to pull your child. Oh, she was abused. She was fucking abused. But she's in the system, right? She's in the system. Heidi was grabbed, no doubt about it. Yeah, she was, oh, she was definitely abused. Um. Anyway, so... If your kid ends up in the sex industry, and here's what I want to say, because, you know, me being a monkey in a cage, being a stripper, as I was described, me being a monkey in a fucking cage, right? And then they call, they call girls on the street hoes. Here's the thing, and I'm going to say this a thousand times out, a thousand times. I don't care who says anything, but here's what I'm going to say. Women, yeah, honeypot. I said that. I was telling Phoenix that last night. I said Hefner was a CIA operative and a honeypot operation and blackmailing everyone. And it's coming out now. And he was a dick and gay and didn't even like women, which is fucking obvious. And an Aries, I might add. So his wife's probably, you know, whatever. I know. <laughs> Damn monkey in a cage, stripping bitch. I, yeah, I know, right? So understand what happens. Honeypot operation, for sure. Understand what happens. When you're in the sex industry and you're younger, whatever it is, whether you're giving blowjobs for money, whether you're high escorts, I charge $5,000, i am like Heidi's girls. You're still a prostitute. It's the difference between Cherry Magazine, um, oh my God, what's the other one? Not Playboy, um, Hustler, Cherry, Hustler, Playboy. Playboy Elite, Hustler Graphic, Cherry, downright fucking gross. It's packaging and marketing. You got girls on the street. You got $5,000 a night girls. They're all doing the same thing. They're still doing the same shit. Uh, and penthouse, thank you. And penthouse. I have friends that were in all of them. And when I was 15, my pictures were put in cherry, but that's against my will and they stole a video. Anyway, not the point. So understand, young girls, what they do is they, they are escort or hooker. Same thing. But see, the girls are shamed for what they do. Okay. The girls are shamed for what they do. Let's look at this in a different way. What stepfather, what grandfather, what uncle, what relative, what woman slept with her sons? Because I can tell you some in our family. Anyway, what did they do to make their children 
have such deep shame and trauma that they become addicts and have to go out on the street. Don't kid yourself. Escorts, eating disorders, drug addictions, and they look pretty fucking great, okay? You're looking at beautiful women. You look at them on the street and you're like, oh, whole bag. What did her parents do? What did her parents do? What did they allow? What school teacher did? What Catholic priest did it? What happened to them? Okay, so I'm just going to say this. When I was in the strip clubs, I pretty much asked a lot of people, like, you know, did this happen to you? Because I was interested in writing a book about it, right? Like, what, like you know, just this. Yeah, you're programmed. You're, you're, you're actually programmed to, to be abused and to fuck your life up, to have no power whatsoever. You're programmed. And there are women that sleep with their sons. There are women that abuse men, too. So they end up on the street, sexualized, men as well, men as well. Okay, I knew it when I had my sons. I watched them. It's not just MK Ultra. These are people, these are people that, good night when you guys are leaving. These are people that, oh God, Nicola, absolutely. These are people that just in regular households in the Midwest. See, here's a problem. If you grow up with a parent that sexually abuses you, you were taught that you are a piece of shit. That's what I was told. You are the problem. You are the problem. So you grow up and you're like, you're like, well, mm -hmm. if I'm the problem, then my kids are okay meeting my grandparents because you meeting my parents because you want a connection, right? You want a connection, right? So you bring your kids. Then your kids get abused because you think it's you. That's a trap. I never did that. I never did it. I never left my kids alone with my family. I did take them to meet them. And of course, my mother said in front of my son, I don't really like him, to which Keith was 10 and he whispered to me, I don't really like her. She said it in front of at dinner. Like, I'm like, we can hear you. You don't need to talk about my son like that in front of his face. Like she was that arrogant. So I chose not to be around that. I also chose into the family I married with my kid's siblings to remove one of the siblings from my kid because she was so fucking inappropriate that I didn't want her to do anything inappropriate. She was so fucking inappropriate and so jacked up and dysfunctional and toxic. I did not want her. So I kept my kids away from one of their siblings on purpose. Not Jimmy, but that's what I did. I'm just not going to do it. Like I'm going to draw the line when you're sexually, you're, when you sexualize me, you're not getting near my fucking kids. That's what's going to, you're just not going to do it. Where I made the mistake was not leaving their father because I did that. Yeah, you all jacked up. Exactly. Well, of course. I mean, and you're not, you're not, you are not going to blame a girl out on the street until you're going to go back in her history. So if you tell me she's the problem, I'm going to say what happened to her and I'm going to find the adults that fucked her when she was a child or touched her or whatever. So here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. When you're in the strip clubs, what's the difference between a stripper, an escort, and, and a prostitute? A prostitute, a, a street prostitute doesn't feel, they, they may feel they're not able to be a high-class call girl because they grew up in poverty. So that's a mindset there. They go straight to the street because there's a poverty issue. An escort feels that if she charges more, she's taking from them and it's worth the money. So she, what she is, is a money addict. They're all money addicts, okay? But here's the problem. If you become a prostitute in any way, it means that you were sexualized and then given gifts. If you were a stripper, you were probably spied on molested in some way, but more from the perspective of people watching you. So you don't let them touch you. They watch. So there's voyeurism, there's peeping toms. So your relatives were probably peeping toms that occasionally molested you and didn't give you gifts. Okay. The prostitutes are taught. If I fuck you, I give you something. Therefore it's, it's give and take, you see? So I did save myself. I did, but I married into it again. But anyway, um, I'm self-employed, I know. But when you talk to John and my children, they didn't think so. Keith was proud of my work. I don't think Jason's proud of what I do, but I, I can't help it. I was, you know, oops, 
I, sorry, my camera froze. I was what I, I, I can't help it. You know, their father married a stripper. That's not my fault. That was his choice. I married him. He chose to marry a stripper. That's something he brought into his home. So he doesn't need to make me carry shame. Lori had a great point last night. She tells her story. So I said to Phoenix, I said, you know, are you comfortable telling your story? And she said, I wasn't comfortable until Lori, <laughs> Lori talked about it because they did the TV circuit when Phoenix was younger, the, the you know, interview circuit. And um, Lori goes, why would I be ashamed of who I was? I'm not wearing their shame. And I've always felt that. The men that go in and abuse the women and the women who abuse, it's mostly men though, I'm sorry, that was my observation. They carry shame because they don't want to marry you if you're a stripper or a hooker. They want to use it against you. Like my husband, no, I haven't seen the pictures yet. I, I'll look. Like my husband's family, when they thought they could, you know, oh, she was a stripper. Well, you're not affecting me. You're not affecting me. I'm not ashamed about it. Your dad married a stripper. Go talk to him. Go talk to him about it. Go talk to him. Okay, I'm not doing anything illegal. I am not, I can't, I know I should bring Phoenix on. I should bring her on and Lori too. So you can see that. But I, yes, they put the shame. Yes, yes, yes. You know that, Bobby. We've talked about it. And it can happen in relationships with narcissists, all of that. The abusers created the strippers. That's exactly right. They're the ones paying for it. And they're like justifying it. And they always, it is a power play. But uh, no. And alcoholics are the worst, and that's why they're in bars, and they're addicts. It's like an aha moment when you realize that you're living. I was a child, I know, but according to John, again, I was more worldly. And I'm going to keep saying that because that was actually said to me. So we can talk about it, whatever you want. But imagine what is said to a girl. I thought it was my fault. Yeah, you never told. Exactly, Nora, exactly. We do think it's our fault. I thought I was a piece of shit. It, when my first boyfriend punched me in the face, I was like you know, um, I deserved it. You know, that's it. When I listen to how my sons hate me from the other parent, I figure, well, I screamed at their father. So you see the, the relationships with girls that are in the sex industry, their families cannot work well until they have cleared their trauma. They have, I'll buy your book until they have cleared their trauma. If you do not clear your trauma, you are going to marry somebody that repeats that cycle and you're going to be fighting them and your kids are going to hate you. Oh, a ghostwriter, email me, email me. I need a ghostwriter because I'm that unskilled. <laughs> um, no, you know, literally that's what, no, but these girls think it. You are not walking. And in fact, one of my friends, I'm not going to say which one, and I'm not going to say anything about it, but there's a young lady that we know that was walking the track in downtown LA, and they're completely naked. Like, they're not wearing clothes. Why are they on the side of the street not wearing clothes? I get the cops called on me. Well, it hasn't really happened like that. I can't eat dinner in a restaurant without a fake piece of cloth. But they let these kids... And they are young kids and then they grow older and they don't know how else to get out of the industry because they're used to making money like that. Why are they not wearing clothes? Why? Why are they not wearing clothes? Like, what is Garcetti doing in Los Angeles? I don't think it's illegal, but they are not. I'm telling you, I saw little G-strings. They're butt cheeks hanging out. Like, I mean, hey, I am really glad that they have nice bodies. That's not the point. The point is, why is that happening? Family members do it all the time. This chick in our family literally walked in the living room and took her clothes off in front of her fucking father, okay? What is that? And then you get, here's what you get. Oh, I don't remember that. You don't remember that? You're part of the problem that you don't remember that. Because I do remember it. I'm serious. This is a growing ass fucking woman. This is sexual abuse. This is predatory on her part. Why would you think you can do that? Why would you do that in front of a room full of relatives? Why would you do that? That shows you you're dysfunctional, but I'm the bitch. I'm the monkey in the cage. Well, this one's ignoring it. This one's closing her eyes and I'm going, um, excuse me. Excuse, yeah, they lie and say they don't remember. It makes me, that's called covert sexual abuse. When you have a parent 
who has an adult child that undresses in front of them and they don't say shit, like go in the fucking bathroom. And here's what I got told. You always ran around in your underwear in front of the boys. No, I didn't. No, I did not. No, I didn't. I wore bike shorts. Only if they walked in my bedroom without knocking would they have seen anything and they didn't do that. So yeah, well, that's exactly right. But you see these people and it's, yeah, they're drunk and hot. Exactly. But you still know better. So now that person in the family goes and has kids. What do you think she's doing with her kids? I don't know. What do you think? No, they're not really my family. Of course not. What do you think they're really doing with the kids? What are they doing? Are they giving them drugs to let them get high at home? Are they tuning them out? Are they doing porky pig in it? <laughs> what? Bobby cracks me up. What are they doing? Let's see. My mom dressed in front of me, but I'm. that's different. I mean, I took my boys into the girls' bathroom when they were little because I wasn't going to let them go into the men's bathroom by themselves. She was making a statement about how ugly she was, but that's besides the point. And I'm told I'm crazy, but don't forget, I'm sober and I remember. And it's weird. It's weird. This goes on in so many families. And then you see by the choice of partner they marry, then you understand the trauma that they've been through in childhood, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Probably. That's probably what she was trying to do. Humiliation ritual, whatever. But you know, when you marry into it, you don't understand it because you're coming out of your life. You have such guilt about yourself being a piece of shit. Yeah, she has no boundaries. You have no idea how no boundaries she has. Anyway, um, yes, no, yes, yes. I'm going to go with a yes on that. Anyway, you as the prostitute, you as the stripper are coming into this life and you are, let's see, a narcissist associations are their confessions. Yes. Exactly. So you, you are literally marrying your unhealed trauma. Yeah, Bobby, there you go. You are marrying your unhealed trauma. So I don't know. He denies it, but who knows? I have no idea. I don't know why you didn't dress it in front of your father and his new wife who's younger than you. So I don't get it. No, he says no. Um, so I don't understand, but I can't imagine why you'd marry a stripper if you didn't have a fucking problem in your own childhood. So, you know, why are you marrying a stripper? Like, that's actually his fault, not mine. Like, why are you even dating a woman like that? Who told you to do that? And then why are you blaming the woman? So who told you to do that? Seriously. So that's between, yeah, it's a power trip because you're, you're broken. That could be it too. So that's it. Yeah. Is it MK Ultra? Yeah. Triggered. Don't play in. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't play into the alcoholic game now. I came home. Yeah. He could have been going through a midlife crisis. Of course. No, I'm a stripper. That's, that's all I was. I didn't have any other skills. That's the only skill I had. However, I did work at a truck stop. I, let's see. Why did my ex-husband want to marry a teenager? Because he's a pedophile. If you're marrying a teenager, you're a pedophile. If you're a 40-year-old man and you're dating me and I'm 20, you don't want women your own age in your face. You're a piece of shit. You're the piece of shit. That's what I think actually now. Uh, midlife, he was 200. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Psychic stripper. I always were, I always did the astrology and stuff. So I'm too plump to be a stripper. There's a whole world out there for all kinds of people. She's on the crinkly thing. Um, but anyway, the problem is, yeah, it's pedo energy and power. There's, you know, bent, not broken. Yeah, I was bent. But when you, I married my trauma and I divorced it. I just divorced it. But my, you know what I realized? Literally, let's see, because older men control the young ones. Of course, because they get away with their shit and they laugh at you. Let's see, I was a stripper 15 years on and off. Jolie girl, you cute girl. Um, so that is good. Grooming, all kinds of stuff. Hey, what exactly are you doing? Um, <laughs> So let's see what plum. Yeah, girls make all kinds of money doing all kinds of things, right? Um, I studied astrology since I was little, since I was seven and all the way up. I'm still studying. So I'm still studying astrology. And if I haven't got your chart to you, I'm deaf. Yeah, metallic gray. If I haven't got your chart to you, I'm working on it. So it's abuse is about power. It is. And when they see you broken, they, they feel good about themselves. So yeah, she's, she's, that's it. She's going on, um, a thing. Yes. Well, Elvis, 
everybody's like, oh, Elvis and Priscilla love story. I'm like, she was fucking 14 when her parents sold her. And so, you know, in, in our family, they're like, well, why did her parents sell her? I'm like, why did Elvis take her? Just because your parents try to sell you to me and I'm an adult, okay? Your parents are wrong, but so is Elvis wrong. Priscilla's parents, right? Priscilla's parents. They gave her to Elvis and Elvis said he never slept with her till she was of age. What? Shut up or you're gay, Elvis, one or the other. You may not have slept with her. You could have been gay. She was sold to Elvis. Exactly. They, Elvis was a pedo. That's being a pedophile. I'm sorry to break everybody's thing. El, that's, you know, Elvis lied. Lied about what? Of course, not sleep. At 14 in Germany, Elvis lied. Yeah, exactly. But it's still pedophilic. You're fucking, Elvis was gay. I think he was gay too, actually. The way that he had that thing, like actually a real narcissist. He's going to fuck her and knock her up and never go near her again, right? Uh-huh. Yes, a Kramer pimp hat. Yes, we saw that. Phoenix is like, did you just check that out? I'm like, I just checked that out. I just checked that out. Yes, Kramer in his pimp hat. When, yes, remember when they were doing pimping out of the cars? Talk about that too. They do that. Let's see, according to Priscilla, he barely touched her. He was a narcissist and gay. I think he was gay and a mama's boy. She probably, I think his mother incested him actually. Am I going to get yelled at for saying that? That was a rumor when I was a kid. So all famous guys went with teenagers in the 50s and 60s. That's our culture and that's wrong. You should know better than doing that. You should know better. You should know better. I wonder how Jason would feel if I went with somebody his age. I wonder if he'd like that. Seriously. I wonder seriously if he would like that. Considering his father did that. Like, would you like that? Would you be okay with that? Yeah. So we'd see. I don't think he'd be okay with it. Um, no, I, are you kidding me? I'd slap him in the head. <laughs> Boom. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Heidi was on Dr. Drew's, but Heidi is still on some kind of drugs. So, no, it is a fair question. Men can do it, but when a woman does it, you know, whatever. R oh, well, R. Kelly, he was a pimp for the elite in the music industry. I don't, I don't date. So he was, uh, he had a child and wife has a beard. Yeah, there you, exactly. That and that too. Here's the thing. Who in Priscilla's family gave her to Elvis was gay. So this, Priscilla married her trauma. She married her trauma. That's it. She married her trauma. That's what she did. She married her trauma. Um, that's what she did. Sad, it reminds me. Oh, Mackenzie Phillips. You know, and then people go, well, why was she still sleeping with him? Because she was trauma bonded to him? Because that's what happened? Even Michelle Phillips denying Mackenzie's things. It's like, fuck you, just because you think your man wouldn't do it. He did it. He did it. He did it. You want to know why she was a heroin addict? Very fucking obvious. Plus, Mick Jagger was in on it, but they're all in on it. And it's okay. It's okay, right? It's okay because it's Mick Jagger because he has money. Um, he was not gay for real. I, I don't know if he was gay. I think he must have been because he didn't touch his wife. He did, oh, that's right, R. Kelly and Aaliyah. Yeah, well, R. Kelly was a pimp for the elite music industry. R. Kelly, R. Kelly was a pimp. That's what he did. He went out to bring the young girls in. That's what his purpose was behind the music. So let's see, they say Michelle Obama was, yeah. I don't like Mick Jagger. I love his music. Who am I kidding? Yeah, Mackenzie Phillip, uh, when she denied that John would touch her, I know, I know, but it was so obvious. She's a heroin addict. Your drug addiction is your trauma. I don't know when Hillary died. Your drug addiction is your, yes, Jimmy Page, that young girl they passed all around. That young girl they passed all around. Um, oh my God. Okay, so like I was 14 and a man was 21. I was 14 and the guys were 30 and 40. So, you know, um, yeah. That's it. So you're groomed when you understand when a, when a woman marries older, there's something in her background right there. Age does matter. So I don't care. I mean, you may think it doesn't, but it fucking does. Okay. It absolutely the fuck does. It absolutely the fuck does matter. Okay. It just does. So it just does. It's that. What about Canada? I think we know that that's Castro's. Age does matter. When a man says age doesn't matter, he's lying. He's lying. He's lying. 
I love Mick Jagger's music. I'm guilty. So I was listening to Pretty Young Thing by Michael Jackson, right? Listen to that. I love Michael Jackson. P-Y-T, Pretty Young Thing. Pretty Young Thing. Singing na, 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 na. Anyway, you know how he goes. Pretty Young Thing. Yeah, he means his age doesn't matter. I know. You know what I always say? Would you, if because you're seven, going to be 76, would you, would you be okay with your wife being 96 and still being with her? No, because you would never fucking do that, you lying sack of shit. Exactly. Exactly. Well, 19, you're kind of an adult. Um, let's see. Okay. Chronic meth user. She ran away for second foster home. Wait. Oh, no. Um, she was gone for a month. No one told me. Mind you, I'm paying. Yes. Yes. Oh, my God, sweetheart. Oh, my God. Okay. Nether, another real world tap. What? I'm sorry. I don't know your name. But anyway, oh, my God. Yeah, they don't tell you. And you are paying. When you have the money, you do have to pay the foster care system, right? Pretty young thing. Pretty young thing. Pretty young thing. Go listen to the lyrics. Unfortunately, let's, where, where's my phone? So Kendall, a, I know, a thousand years older. Everybody admired Hugh Hefner. What a pile of shit, right? So understand what they're doing too. What I think is going on with prostitutes and strippers and all of this is I think it's a stealing of energy from people is what I think. I think it's a stealing of energy. And that's what I think. And, you know, I'm supposed to feel, I'm supposed to keep it quiet so I don't embarrass my children, you know, who I am. But my children should know who I am, right? It's okay for me to say it. It's finally okay at 55 for me to say what I am. I don't need to be embarrassed. I don't need to be embarrassed, right? So there you go. Let's see. Yeah. Family members, I told my mom she did nothing my entire life. I have thought, oh, there's nothing wrong with you. No, it's them, sweetheart, Brianna. It's them. It's fucking them. Who touches a child? Who touches a child? Who is voyeuristic with a child? Who does it, right? Who does that? Who does it? Who's a peeping Tom? Who's at fault? Who the fuck is at fault? We knew, I knew about Hugh Hefner. I knew girls that did Playboy. I knew Anna Nicole Smith. I knew girls that did Playboy. So that was common knowledge. Hugh Hefner brought everybody in there. It's not at all you. It's not you. It's not, I have no energy. Yeah, let's see. The guys that go, don't have capacity. They don't, they can't be with someone their own age because they're defective. That's exactly right. They're defective. Um, you know strippers. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I did like Anna. Anna was definitely a victim of many things. Bobby knows Anna too. Um, okay, let me look this up for you guys so I can see. Pretty young thing lyrics. Let's listen to these. Uh, I, was, I was an abused. Aw, yeah, a lot of people are abused. A lot of people. And I should have known something was wrong, emotionally immature. It's, it, but it's, there, there's a problem. And you're always looked at like you're the scumbag. You're the gold digger. You're the fucking hoe bag. You're this. What, what really, ladies, is here's what I'm going to tell you. Here's what I'm going to tell you. If at all you are a young lady that comes from abuse and you have intellect and humor and you're attractive, if you go with one of these men that is not at your level, even if he appears to have more money, appears to be older, um, yes, it is exactly any of those things. Once he wakes up and sees that he got what he wanted, but he can't handle it. You're going to be in trouble. Okay, exactly. All right. So let's look at this. This pisses me off because I like this and the bathrobe. Well, he was an addict. Hugh Hefter was a fucking addict and couldn't get out of bed. Don't date a young stripper if you can't handle her energy. Don't end some, don't, don't fucking date somebody with a big mouth if you can't handle them. Don't fucking do it. Don't make me change, you change. If your family doesn't like your wife, tell your family to fuck off. How about that? How about you tell your family to fuck off instead of chastising your wife and then making her fight you and making her kids hate you? This goes on with every abused child. 
The kids are in the middle of it because there's some fucker and then that. Okay, let's look at the lyrics. Um, you know you, you make me feel so good inside. I always wanted a girl like you. Such a PYT, pretty young thing. Ooh. <laughs> um, where did you come from, lady? He put the word lady in there. And ooh, won't you take me there right away, won't you, baby? Tenderoni. I don't even know what that word means. What does tenderoni mean? Tenderoni, you got to be like a spark, my nature, sugar fly with me. I am i don't know what any of that means. Um, don't you know, now is the perfect time. We can make it right. Hit the city lights. Then tonight, ease the loving pain. Let me take you to the max. Fuck you, right? I want to love you, pretty young thing, pretty young thing. You need some loving, TLC, tender love and care. And I'll take you there, girl. I want to love you, <laughs> pretty young thing. Okay, I can't read anymore. It sounds like he's cooking dinner or doing the other. Tender, right? That sounds like, I can't let, fuck, I can't listen to it. It sounds like he's eating her. No, don't kick me off of there young and tender. It sounds like he's eating her, right? Yeah, I can't break out and sound, Jackie. You know I can't fucking sing. <laughs> Age matters. Yes. Basically an innocent girl that apparently she's a tenderoni. So I'm assuming he cooked her for dinner. I don't know what the fuck that. Quincy Jones was with his daughter, right? That was when I was growing up. He meant tender stuff roni. Okay, I, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I cannot. Okay, I want to look up this Robin Thicke song. I like Robin Thicke's song. He said, Robin Thicke is sounding a little bit like Michael Jackson and his lyrics are raunchy, but I like him, but he also sounds like he's gay and could never really get a woman. I don't know. Oh, tender. Yeah, I don't know. I just want a black man to call. A f <laughs> sounds like he's singing to a 12 year old, right? Or, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Qu Quincy Jones slept with one of his daughters. I think the daughter he had with Natasha Kinski. I don't remember. Okay, don't quote me on that. Okay, Robin Thick, Robin Thick songs. What's that song? No, not Rashida. It's another one. Um, let me look at my music. I have to look the lyrics up because I like it. I like the song. So, you know, there's got to be something seriously wrong. My picker is off. Well, see, when you look at Robin Thicke and you look at Miley Cyrus, she was wearing the black and white. She was dressed like them stripper humping that thing. She went completely crazy. But you know what happened? Blurred lines. Yes, blurred lines. Thank you. Was that what I was listening to? Yes, blurred lines. Good. You got me. Okay, so um, Robin Thicke song. Okay, Blurred Lines lyrics. Let's look at, the, I've got a headache. I gotta take that off. Oh my God, headache. All right, headache. Okay, Robin Thicke. Let's look at this. Blurred Lines lyrics. I just wanna see what kind of fuckery is in this song, all right? So here we go. Okay, this just sounds like, yeah. Okay, so he's, <laughs> when you read this, he sounds like he, I believe he got sued for that song. Okay, everybody get up. Hey, 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 hey. Well, we should pay him millions for that. Turn me up. Okay, well, that's whatever. If you can't hear what I'm trying to say, hey, girl, come here. If you can't read from the same page, hey, maybe I'm going deaf. Maybe I'm going blind. Okay, apparently, because like, Okay, now he was close, tried to domesticate you, but you're an animal. Baby, it's in your nature, meow. <laughs> I hope he's not talking about literally <laughs> a cat. If he's fucking a cat, I can't go there, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, father figure. I totally get the lyrics of father figure. I, I Hey, you're talking to me. It's fuck your daddy. Fuck a little boy, but in the gay thing, father figure, right? Fuck a little boy. Right. Just like a girl fucks her daddy. Exactly. Um, okay. I know. Don't report me on here. I'm talking about sexual abuse and it's an important topic. Just let me liberate you. And he keeps putting, hey, hey, hey. You don't need no takers. That man is not your maker. 
And that's why I'm going to take a good girl. I know you want it. I know you want it. I know you want it. You're a good girl. Can't let it get past me. You're far from plastic. Is he saying he fucks plastic dolls? I don't know what he's saying here. Um, talking about getting blasted. I hate these blurred lines. Well, now I'm blurred from reading this. <laughs> but you're a good girl the way you grab me. Must want to get nasty. Go ahead. Get at me. Okay. You the hottest bitch in the place. I'm so lucky. You want to hug me? What rhymes with hug me? Why didn't he just say fuck me? Why didn't he just say that? Oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, blurred lines is giving me a headache now. Okay, let's look up father figure. Oh, Pharrell Williams. Well, that, I because I'm like, who is singing this song, right? Okay, let's look up father figure. Father figure lyrics. I'm really going to hate it. I'm really, is making my IQ drop? Yeah, me too. Uh, I really love, really love Mick Jagger's music. Okay, <laughs> really fucking love it. But I hate Mick Jagger now. I can't do it, especially since his girlfriend, look at my hair's gone bananas, especially since his girlfriend was killed by a red scarf. She was given a hot shot. Can you tell a boy, can't tell a boy from a girl? Well, I can tell. Pharrell wrote it and featured T.I. Let me tell you about T.I. and Tiny. I'm going to tell you about that. All right. Um, LOL, daddy issues. <laughs> Trisha, oh my God, what is wrong with that woman? Remember how she got started eating bananas? That Trisha Pietas or whatever her name is. Oh my God. Um, okay, I'm reading father figure, please. Jagger. Yeah, I know. He No, he fucked Mackenzie Phillips. He didn't just come on to her. He fucked her when her dad went to the store. Trisha Paytas, yeah. That girl bothers me. I don't know why, like, stop. But she just bothers me now at this point. I'm like, mm, Sloan, check. Uh, I Okay, hold on. Who do I have to check out? Sloan, check out. Hang in there, baby. Okay. I'm reading Father Figure. Look, I'm gagging. I'm throwing up in my mouth. That's all I wanted. Something special, something sacred in your eyes for just one moment to be bold and naked at your side. Um... Sometimes I think that you'll never understand me. Maybe this time is forever. Say it can be. Whoa, that's all you wanted. Something special, someone sacred in your life. Just for one moment to be warm and... Okay, stop with the warm and naked at my side. First of all, get the fuck out of my bed with your warm and naked shit, right? Just take your warm naked body and go. Um, <laughs> I'm like, he's talking too much about it. Um, sometimes I think you'll never understand me. Okay. I will be your father figure. Oh, baby. Now I'm throwing up. I can never listen to the hiss again. Put your tiny hand in mine. I'd love to. I will be your preacher, teacher, be your daddy. Anything you have in mind. It would, it would make me... I will be your father figure. Very happy. I've had enough of crime. Uh, please let me. I will be the one who loves you till the end of time. But sometimes love can be mistaken for a crime. Oh, my fucking God. He's talking about, I, 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 I'm stuttering. <laughs> I'm stuttering. I'm stuttering. I need a shower. Tiny hand. So it could be considered a crime because it is a crime. So if it could be considered a crime, it is a crime. It's a crime. It's a crime. You just committed a crime. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Okay. Okay. I'm now like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. This is why he needed to die. They consider what they do to kids sacred. They can consider it sacred all they fucking want. I did the show. I did the show with T.I. and Tiny for um, VH1. So the song is now dead to me. It's dead to me. I can't listen to it again. Fuck George Michael now. I hate him. Who wrote the song? Who wrote the song? Maybe he meant a tiny Asian woman. <laughs> yeah, he had the beard, the beard Asian makeup lady that he dated. Yeah, he did. I love George Michaels. I loved him in Wham. Watch the Tindler Swindler on Netflix. No, I can't. I'm going to throw up. And Prince. Now, Prince, you know, little Nikki. 
these people are masturbating in the middle of a hotel lobby. I'm like, yeah, that's like out there in public, right? So Prince had some shit going on too. Okay, so I flew to Georgia 2016 or 2015. Sorry, my mouth is all crazy. Anyway, I he seemed like a really good person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wham in those tiny shorts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> it may have been ghostwritten by a fucking pedophile. <laughs> okay, so anyway, all of that aside, I flew to Georgia. I had to listen to eight hours of nonsense from my baby daddy before I got on a plane to go to Georgia. Anyhow, I flew to Georgia and I had to walk up on T.I. and Tiny's house with Tiny and her daughter, and I can't think of the daughter's name. Anyway, as I describe... I literally went up to the door and Tiny answered the door. They did not prepare me. They did not prepare me for her eyes. She, <laughs> I can't dance. <laughs> this, I'm being sarcastic. Anyway, they did not prepare me for her eyes. She had an eye transplant video uh, eye transplant in Africa cornea transplant when she opened the door I almost fell literally back Zaniqua is her daughter's name that's the one Zaniqua was born on July 14th the same as my Jace anyway T.I. and Tiny Tiny is his wife when I looked at her eyes I could not I could not see into her. She is tiny. I could not see into her eyes. Zanique, Zaniqua, right? I could not see into her eyes. It made me insane. Yes, her eyes are ghostly. It made me crazy. Um, I have no idea. I didn't ask her. She could have been possessed and it could have been a clone. Thinking back, think about it for a second. She had an eye transplant, right? Oh, you're in the windowsill, crazy cat. I'm like, who, what ghost over there? So think about it. Think about it. Clone them. Put these things and they're clones and they tell you something different, right? I didn't think about it then, but I literally was so unnerved. I was like, and she's very pretty. She's not, she's not not pretty. She's funny. I liked her a lot. I liked her a lot. And it's really interesting. When I read her, I was talking to her about the divorce. And then I said, no, you're going to have another baby again. She did. But I know she, she wanted to divorce him. Yeah, no, it was, it was, they were pale, iridescent, white, blue, cadaver eyes. No, really. Yes, I don't know, for surgery. She didn't want to have her eye color. Her mother was white and her father was black. And um, the mother was white, like, like white, like me, like with a little pixie and look at, I'm trying to fix my hair. <laughs> so I took my glasses off. Anyway, the wife was like that, right? And she is short. I'm trying, let me see if I can find a picture of her. She is short. She's probably four foot nine, 10, maybe. Betty Davis eyes. I don't even know what that means. Betty Davis had bug eyes. Like she had a thyroid condition. I mean, who sings about Betty Davis eyes? I know what's her name did, but still she looked like she had a fucking thyroid condition. Did she not? I thought she looked like she had a thyroid condition. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, Zombie Father Figure wrote and produced by George Michael. Oh, thank you for looking that up. Now I really hate his guts. <laughs> um, so, yeah, no, I can't. Oh, my God. No, I just can't. I'm like, whatever. Anyway, um, let's see. The Royals check two before marriage. Yeah, I just. Yeah, she's just 16. And you know what? No, Betty Davis had bug eyes, thyroid condition. She did. She had ugly eyes. I'm sorry. Let's see. I never. No, Betty Davis eyes. Like her eye. Look at Betty. I'm pulling up a damn picture of Betty Davis. Let's just pull this up and get this done with. Betty Davis did not have Scorpio eyes. Scorpio have piercing, penetrating eyes. You don't know what they're doing. Betty Davis had like, I'm cuckoo crazy. My eyes are bugging out of my head. Just saying. Her eyes look like a thyroid condition. She had. She did have bug eyes. Those aren't Scorpio eyes. That's like a, that's like a um, thyroid condition or I don't know, whatever. Um, bang eyes. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, like, why are you singing about Betty Davis? Why, why are you doing that? You know, no. 
images. Let me see images. These eyes are not Scorpio. I guarantee you. She's a very, very unattractive woman. And she was a fucking Aries, I might add. This is not an attractive person. Why is this an actress? This is not an attractive person. Her eyes are, are show hormonal imbalance, actually. It's, yeah, overactive, overactive, yeah. She had large hood. She's, she's, she's not a Scorpio eyes. She's really not. Those are not Scorpio eyes. Don't care. Marty Feldman eyes. No, you know who has Marty Feldman eyes? Neil Young, okay? Neil Young. Yeah, oh, did he? Well, that's good. Yeah, Betty Davis eyes. Like, why you want to look like Betty Davis for? Why? Um... No, I, no, I, I like, I have Aries, Aries women. She looks like a villain. Yeah. No, I don't like Aries. I think we know that Betty woman has a was amazing actress. Yeah. I don't care. Susan Sarandon has the same eyes. I don't like Betty Davis. Um, although I do find sweet baby Jane funny. Just to think I'm looking for the picture of T.I. and Tony. No, they're not. She's not an attractive woman. I mean, you can tell me she is. I got eyes I can see. I love, uh, beauty is not in the eye of the beholder, but there are some things that are classically beautiful and she's not one of them. So she is what she is and she can't help what she is, but to sing a song about it, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't understand what you're doing. Thank you for that. <laughs> I like, I do like Aries women, but not Betty Davis. I don't, I don't, you know, my daughter isn't there. Yeah, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, um, I'm just saying, like, Betty Davis was an Aries. She was problematic. She was always fighting with that mental patient, Joan, what's her name? I, I, I did not, uh, wait, I did not, no wire hangers. No wire hangers. She's always fighting with that one, no wire hangers. I'm trying to get, see, I can't get into my old, um, hold on. I'm trying to get into my old. Facebook, so I can show you the picture of T.I. and Tiny. Okay, here we are. I'm going to look it up because um, I shut that Facebook down. Anyway, it's really interesting what they thought. Mommy Dearest, yeah, jo uh, Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford. And Joan Crawford, I mean, look how she raised her daughter. What are you adopting for, you whack job? Hello, mental patient. What are you adopt? Like, what are you doing, right? What exactly are you doing? All right, let me find this, y'all. Let me find this. No, I got to find, I'm sorry. I'm wasting time here. Anyway, <laughs> I'm looking. Joan Crawford just looks like a fucking mental patient. Another fucking mental patient, okay? All right, so what was I looking for? Who was I? Oh, T.I. and Tiny. That's right. Let me find a T.I. and Tiny. I've got it somewhere here. I think. Do I really? No, I'm giving myself anxiety. Looking for T.I. and Tiny. T.I. and Tiny. Where the hell do I have these pictures? I just saw them. Oh my God. Okay, anyway, I'll find them. I'll keep looking. All right. Uh, possession. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Thank you. I don't even know what it's about. I couldn't stand the song. I was like, if you're going to keep singing about this bitch's eyes, I can't. Now that makes sense that it's about possession. That makes perfect sense. I like that you're telling me that because that does make sense. No, I can't find the picture of T.I. and Tiny. I have no idea where it went. Okay, here's a picture. Y'all wanted to see a picture of John. So this is me and John. John was 70 here and I was 50. 70 and 50. You see this? Do you see this? 70 and 50. Got it? You're right there. You see? Dee, nee, nee, nee. Okay. Uh, Graves disease. That's it. Yeah. So I just showed you pictures. You all wanted to see what he looked like. So that's it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's where that is. Anyway. Yeah, I'm looking for G.I. and Tiny's picture and where the actual hell is it? I don't know where it is. Okay. Um, yeah, he was 70 there and I was however old, 50, 50 and 70. So that was that. 
that was that. Where the hell is my TI and tiny pictures? I do not know. I cannot see. Cannot see, cannot find them. I should have had them. Where the hell are they? Where the actual hell are they? Okay, whatever. I can't look on this thing. Anyhow, okay, so um, they have ugly eyes. Eyes look scary. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> oh, my God, right? Um, hilarious. Yeah, that's a picture. We were at... Um, I don't know where the hell I was. And at Bobby's house. We're at Bobby's house. Anyway, that's where that was. I had a picture of T.I. and Tiny, and I swear to God, I don't know where that is. I... Okay, so, yeah. All right, so you got, I'll be scared to la la la. Is Sloan, what's up with Kanye? I think his um, cornea transplant, it is real. I saw it real. Per I'm just saying they could say cornea transplant and it could be a clone. Just think about that for a second. The eyes were extremely, she's like 150 pounds. Who is 150 pounds? Tiny or Wendy Williams? And she had the same eyes and was a royal. Yeah, I don't care what they say about royals having those eyes. Kanye, let's look at Kanye's Instagram. Kanye speaks truth at times, and then he loses his mind. Here we go. Ye, I'm ye. Shit, he's got 13.1 million followers. Okay, let's see what ye is doing. Deep page six, I love my family. I love being at home with my kids. I'm not a bad man because I'm not a democratic like 90% of the black... I love my wife. I love my children. I love God. I'm an artist and I need to paint my children's future. Dear six, blah, 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 blah. I respect your profession. La, 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 la. Okay. Uh, the black and white symbolism. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Yes, we are safe. Um, no, we didn't find anybody, but they'll come around. They'll come around. Truckload of roses for Kim on Valentine's Day. If I was a new girlfriend, I'd be a little bit pissed off about this. I'm praying at ye can flourish his dreams. Okay. Why is he doing this? <laughs> okay. What? Upon my wife's request, please nobody do anything physical. I have no idea what he's doing. Yeah, I don't know what to say. I feel like I'm crazy watching this. I feel like I'm fucking crazy. Okay, I, I can't look at his shit because I'm, I'm just the sip. Yes, Kim is with Humiliation. Oh, Humiliation. She's with Pete Davidson, which is like Illuminati. The only reason that Pete Davidson looks, what's his birthday? He looks like a Pisces, but a weird one. His face is like this. He's got weird mouth. I can't. I don't know what they've done. Anyway, um, Julia Fox. Yes, he must be bipolar, but I think he's been damaged, really. I don't know. I Oh, Pete Davidson's a Scorpio. Yeah, but he, oh, he looks watery then, but it's his mouth I can't deal with. Not, not what he says. When I look at his face, I want to punch him in the face. So some about him isn't right. Yeah, he's not right. Anyway, Wes is bipolar, but very smart. Pete Davidson tattooed Hillary Clinton on him. Yeah, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> Cankles Clinton. Pet, wait, Pets has a disease. I don't know what that means. Okay, Pete has a disease. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say with Cankles Clinton. What, he's not even funny. No, and he's just, he's kind of lurchy looking. Remember Lurch? Do you remember? Wait, Pete, ha I, I can't see that. Lurch, do you remember Lurch? Yeah, I don't know what to say. I thought they look like family, T.I. and Tiny. They are married, aren't they? They're married, real Eminem, at that Super Bowl. Well, the Super Bowl was a big, huge, whatever. I think Pete is gone. Something's gone with Pete. Pete has mental issues like Kanye. Could Kim be his handler? Let's do, Pete has a clitoris, colitis. 
what is it, clitoris or colitis? I don't know what you're saying. I'm like, what, wait, what? Um, Lunch from the Adams family. He says dark circles, yeah. <laughs> Whatever, right? No, I talked about doing the hooker track. Like that's what we did last night. Jackie, if you didn't see this, I'm gonna show you all again. I, they do. Lori and I were handing these out along with Phoenix in these pouches to the girls on the track. Like you're like, what? yes, he looks like he's sick with liver failure under here, something. Anyway, Lori and I were handing these out. Uh, colitis, stomach issues. I'm like, thank you, colitis. Thank you. Um, okay, thank you. Now I get what you're saying. That makes sense. Anyway, inside of here, look, there's a QR code. So I'm going to show you guys again. So when one of the girls, see when a girl's walking around and her pimp's watching her, she has, she can go like this, right? She can look at herself in her mirror, mirror, right? She can do that. But when she goes in the bathroom, puts this in her purse, it has a QR code. So it brings up the website, safe site. Then you click on it. You put your location, your gender, and it pulls up beds in the area and will send an Uber to you when you confirm it. So we're giving these out so that if there's a girl that's been trafficked and needed help, she can reach out for help, okay? The glamour pearlies, yeah, exactly. And here's some lipstick with you. That's what we're doing. That's what it is. They're QR codes. So it leads to, um, that's from Lori. It's for her shelter. Look up the teen project. This is her new, this is her new, um, looking for billboards for her here in the valley for her to put her new stuff up. She's buying the old children of the night and she has six other shelters, including Boys Town. So for traffic kids, this is so traffic kids can find a bed. Um, well, I'll find out from Lori where we can send. You can probably ask her to send them um, or whatever. If you were, this is, this is what she's doing. This is her new campaign. So that's what we're doing. Um, that is what we're doing. But that's what we were doing last night. But it was kind of interesting. It wasn't as busy as Saturday night. But you see, um, the QR codes are there. So there you go. And then you do that and it pulls up and then you go through the shelters and you can do it. So that's what we did. So we hand these out on the streets. The pimps think we're some kind of religious nuts trying to save the girls' souls, whatever. We're just trying to save them so that they, they need to get out. Yeah, we're, yeah, con, yes, we're, yeah, well, no, go to the teen project from the teen project and look on her website about that. You can even call Lori. I'll find out where to call and what to do, and I'll put a link up. I don't really know, but yes, Bob Saget, I told you what happened. Baseball bat to the back of the head. He didn't, I, I can't, I just can't, isn't it? Yeah, because the pimps aren't going to question makeup, right? Yeah, no, the Uber drivers that we're sending are through the shelters, so there are people that are vetted and that kind of thing. And also keep in mind, once they've lost, it is trying to go nationwide, Jackie, that's what she's trying to do, but we're, we're putting everything down in Los Angeles. But understand, once they've logged into the system, there's an estimated arrival of time. And if they don't show up there, then Lori gets on their ass, right? So there's that. Yeah, but see, do you know why? Um, yeah, do you know the link? Go to the teenproject.com. And the other, what, we had four special ops working with us. One of the websites is this. It is called savedinamerica.org. Right here, y'all. Savedinamerica.org. These guys were out helping us last night. These are guys that are special ops and Marines. And we had four different special ops. One of the guys came from this company and he um, gave me the card. He does with his group of people rescue runaways without any charge to the parents. So they are straight up military Marines special ops, okay? That's what they do. So he was very interesting. I like them, so there's that. So that's what they're doing. Lori, go to the teenproject.com and that will be, you know, that'll be that. I save one at a time. Lori does the whole shelter thing. When I find a client, like I was explaining, whose daughter was on meth and prostituting, I spoke to her and tried to convince her. I send them to Lori. That's what I do. I have people that come through me, clients with kids that are teenagers. 
girls on the streets, prostitutes. I work with a lot. When they need help, I send them to Lori. You see what I'm saying? So that's my connection to her that way. And I met her through her sister, Allison. So that's how I met Lori. So I kind of work that way. Um, that's it. But it was really fun. It was really eye-opening. And I'm not really scared to walk in Inglewood as one of two very old white women on the street when a truck tried to pick us up, right? Yeah, that's right. We still got it. We still got it. Like, we're so old. We're like, wow, he's trying to pick us up. That's hot. And uh, that was pretty funny. Anyway, you know he didn't have his glasses on and couldn't fucking see, right? <laughs> oh my God, right? Yeah, they, they were supposed to. The streets were pretty bare after the Super Bowl. So I think that, <laughs> no, Lori's like, Phoenix is like, what the fuck is wrong with you two? What is wrong with you two? <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, this is wrong with us. You can see what's wrong with us. Um, we're both cheeky. And Lori's like, there's these crazy people going by. And Lori's like, <laughs> Lori's like, hi. And I'm like, you're worse than me. Canadians say hi to everybody. She goes, I feel like being happy and a smiling. But she did get people saying hi to her. And so it was pretty funny. Um <laughs> Lori's good. Lori's fabulous too. It's, oh, I think I have a picture of Phoenix here. Let me show you. I just remember I came across it. What is wrong with me tonight? My head, my head scattered. Um, anyway, it was, it was very interesting. The girls though are somehow out on our streets, literally in G strings. And the fact that our government is okay with that is like, wow, what the actual hell is wrong with everybody? Like what the fuck is wrong with you people? There's something seriously wrong with you people. Like, what is wrong with you? Okay, so let me find this. I got a bunch of pictures of things. Um, I got pictures with Lori. Hold on. I, I've got one of Phoenix, so you can see the picture from one of Lori's events down here because I told you I would show y'all, so... Okay, I'm getting a headache going through this again. But anyway, what is wrong with a country that allows women to walk half naked on the street then throws masks on your face and then tells you you're going to jail if you don't, um, <laughs> if you know whatever, right? Who does that? Okay, so let's look. Okay, here. Oh my God, I think it's, I, who am I with here? Oh my God, who am I, hold on. Who am I with in this picture? I'm with Phoenix here. Okay, Phoenix is in the middle of me and I cannot remember the other girl's name. So there's, can you see? Can you see? I'm in the green. That's Phoenix. And I cannot remember the other girl's name. Here's, let me just do this. Save photo. Okay. Here's Lori, me, and Phoenix. I forgot I had these. So there. There's Lori, me, and Phoenix at one of Lori's events. Okay. So there's three. There's beautiful Phoenix. And she's just absolutely gorgeous. She's mixed. I'm saying she's mixed. Yeah, she's absolutely stunning, but this is her. And so, yeah, she's lovely. She's fucking lovely. And she's got her life in order. And she's just 28 now. And she's fantastic. Anyway, that, and look at how cute. Me and Lori are two years apart. Pisces and Leo, two years apart. So we're like two years apart. And he, Lori's lovely. She's fantastic. She loves to run as much as I do. She likes to think she exercises and wants to come to Palm Springs. <laughs> yeah, my hair is so thick. And so I shave it a lot. But anyway, um, the photos are on my old phone, phone uh, Facebook, an old Facebook that I have. So they're on an old, old Facebook. Anyway, yeah, those pictures are from, I want to say 2015. Phoenix is now 28 and she's doing superb. She's doing just superb. Superb, superb, and lovely. And Lori's always so generous, invites me to everything, like all of her events. And she auctions me off as a, oh, you guys haven't seen Arlene. I'm going to throw Arlene in this for no reason. Anyway, I just came, there's Arlene that I'm always talking about, me and Arlene. So there's Arlene. She's going to be like, don't show my picture. Arlene. <laughs> Um, I just came across the picture of me and Arlene. I'm like, and there's Arlene. <laughs> um, 
where she's going to be like, well, how do I fit into this one, right? So there's that. These are my old, old Facebook. Yeah, Arlene's gorgeous. And she's a cheeky bitch too, right? She is a cheeky girl, my Arlene. She's cheeky. All the girls are cheeky. They're all cheeky, cheeky. So yeah, so I've got that. And um, yeah, tons of, I'm looking through all these pictures. Tons, oh, here, this is so cute. This was my birthday, 2016. So Barb, Arlene, and me right there. So me, Barb, and Arlene. There we all are. There we are, 2016, my birthday at the comedy club. So we're out there having a fantastic birthday dinner. And okay, here we all, <laughs> I'm showing you these pictures. Oh, you're gonna laugh, you are gonna laugh. Anyway, that there's a whole bunch of pictures, a whole bunch. And this, I forget when this was, when was this? 2013, Lori, this girl, this is when Lori opened Freehab and Russell Brand was her business partner and they fell out. Anyway, there's me and Lori and this was Russell's right-hand girl. She channeled a book after this. She's talked to aliens. So that was me, Lori, and Lori, me, and whoever this girl worked with Russell. So I remember that. And yeah, that was back then. 2013, I remember that day. Very specifically, I remember that day. Yep. And, yep. And that's that. And that's just kind of all that. That's all. You remember the guy that did the film, um, the won the Oscar Milk? This is him, Dustin. Do you remember him? He did the movie Milk and won the Oscar. The movie. With Sean Penn. That's him. So I was at an event with him backstage. That's him. And... Uh, that's what year is that? 2013, right? 2013. Yeah, they, they she didn't get along with that. Um, I mean, with Russell back then. And yeah, so there's tons of stuff. Tons and tons of stuff. I've got tons of pictures here. Tons and tons and pictures. Yeah, anyway, lots of pictures I still can't find. Oh, here, you'll, you'll recognize this one. Y'all recognize this guy? You recognize her and him? The Green Mile and his little young girl. See? You remember? What's her name? Do you remember her name? Yeah, I can't even, I can't think. What the hell was this girl's name? She's darling cute. Uh, yes, Courtney St uh, Stodden, right? Yes, and the Green Mile guy. But that's that tells you how short he really is in real life. She was in, yes, another pedo. She was in huge high heels and I was in moderate high heels and he was in no high heels. So there's that. And then um, this was Good Morning Australia. <laughs> this is on the, the Good Morning Australia show. Anyway, I was on before them and I was on with whoever the hell I was on. Um, this is... This is Eddie and I, and uh, I can't even think of the actor's name. My hand's always over my belly. I don't know why. Yeah, she was 15 or 16. Anyway, that's us backstage. So just that kind of stuff. This is all like 2013. You know, all of that stuff. It's from all of that. Yeah, so it's all, you know, that kind of a thing. And then here we are. Here's us girls at a rock concert in the corner. There you go. You can see us girls at the concert in the corner, right? So there we are. Uh, but I don't have a job. No, 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 I don't. You know, I don't have a fucking job. And I'm a monkey in a cage, monkey in a cage. Um, <laughs> this is on my old Facebook. You got, but I still can't find T.I. and Tiny, right? Where the hell did T.I. and Tiny go? Where are they? Where's T.I.? I'm going to find that picture of them. I know it's on this Facebook page, T.I. and Tiny. Okay, here you go. Here's Barb and Zach at Zach's birthday. This was 2010. There we all are. So there you go. Barb, me, and Zach right there. So anyway, there's tons. There's tons of pictures. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Here's my friend Chris. You don't care, but she moved away. We don't run anymore. Here we are, two runners running up the hill.
There we go. Runners, runners. <laughs> there we are. Chris, great athlete. Anyway, yeah, Zach, that was um, that was his birthday. We were in Hollywood. Um, yeah, we were in Hollywood at that time. So that was his birthday. I've had long, short, you know, whatever. Yeah, so just a rat in a cage. I know, right? Um, your hair has gotten shorter through the years. Yeah, I just cut my hair off because growing it out, my face is so thin that, you know, how can we order a chart? When I open my books back up, I, I have to catch up. I'm, I'm way behind. So I'm giving myself anxiety um, until I catch up. Yeah, okay, so this one, you guys do not care. I know no one cares. Baby chirp and me at the ocean, little baby chirp. He will hate this, little baby chirp. Um, <laughs> I've got to stop showing pictures. I'll be like, here's the family album. Anyway, let's see, it's good you left Sloan. He is, mer yeah, my self-esteem. I know, it's terrible. I know, it is terrible. And here, here is Lori's sister, the brunette in the pack. There's Allison. That's how I met Lori, through Allison right there. So that's Lori's sister, Allison. That's Randy. That's me, and that's Barb. And there we are. Eye transplants are really weird, but where is my picture of T.I. and Tiny? I don't know. It's actually making me crazy, okay, that I cannot find it. I should be able to find it somewhere. Oh, here you go. This was the Playboy show. And this is um, this is Psychic Wayne. He's on my Instagram. He's an astrologer. He's damn good. Y'all should hit him up. So he reads all the rappers. And we both read Naked Girls on this show. So there we were both being misogynistic, doing the Playboy show with the host, Playboy Radio. And that was me and Wayne doing that. He's a great astrologer. So you all should hit him up. Okay, you all should hit him up. Let's see. I have to tell you what his thing is. So, yeah. Oh, he's really handsome. We're the same age and we're Leos. Yeah, he's super nice. Really good astrologer. Let me tell you what his site is. He does super good astrology. Super good. So you probably want to hit him up for that. He posts stuff all the time on, you know, on astrology. So, uh, let's see. I'll tell you what his site is. You might like him. It's Bruce. Here you go. This is his site. Bruce underscore. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I wasn't. I wasn't young. It's like in 2016. This is Bruce underscore Wayne. We are exactly the same and we're both Leos. I mean, we're the same age. Only he's from Georgia and I'm from Canada. But anyway, he does um, great astrology. And so he reads all the rappers. So that's what he does. He reads the rappers. And he's super nice. And he does astrology outlines. So that's really good. Uh, yeah, Bruce Wayne. You know who we yeah, have, Bobby, that, the Bruce Wayne. Yeah, that's us reading the girls. Well, I was younger then. I was like not 50 yet. I was almost 50, but not 50. But anyway, we read the, yeah, this, what, oh, I'm sorry. This was 2013, I lie. So this has almost been 10 years ago in a year, right? Yeah. Anyway, that's there. That's Playboy Radio. That's the two of us. Yeah, Batman. And that was the little host. We all went out after that. But anyway, there. And we read two naked Playboy girls. I mean, they were naked and we were reading them. I should have never agreed to do that, but they were okay with it. So I was like, I'm okay with it then, if you're okay with it. Then I'm okay with it. Anyhow, um, yeah, so there's that. I don't know what you mean by no more chat. Anyhow, so that was that, and that was that. Yeah, and that's all I can tell you. Here we are again. There we are again. Right there. Okay, so, um, yes, if they're really, yes, a psychic, yes, a psychic could, which reminds me, I know, I was cute back then. Anyway, if um, I've changed, but you know what? I should let my hair grow, huh? She put a wig on. No, I can't run with all that hair. Who are we kidding? I cannot do it. Okay, so anyway. Um, <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, he's a, uh, is he a medium too? No, he's psychic. I don't know. I have, don't, can't remember asking him if he's a medium. He, yeah, he's so nice, right? He's very nice. Um, 
Yeah, well, I was cute back then. But anyway, he's nice. I liked him. Very good astrologer. Like, I'm always impressed when a good astrologer comes along. No, I haven't met Courtney Love. He was a very good, he is a very good astrologer. And I think his birthday is August 10th. I might be wrong on that. I might be wrong. I could be wrong. You never know. Uh, but I was super cute back then. I forget. And then, yeah. So anyway, what the hell was I going to say? I was just going to say something like, literally something I want to say. Oh, so on my website this week. Okay. Does using your married last name change your natal chart? No. You could call yourself Bobo the Clown, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, I usually am sloop, super, I usually am <laughs> slim and fit because I don't want to not be slim and fit. Um, I need to be slim and fit because I need to be slim and fit. But what was I going to say? So you guys, I have to have somebody help me with readings because can't do it all. So I'm going to put up Deanna's schedule on my site, right? So it'll go up this week when I find Paul because I can't figure it out myself. So you're going to be able to book with Deanna off of my site and everything's going to go to her. I'm not taking anything. So just so I can put it up on there. So I'm just letting you all know that it's going to go through my site, right, Jackie? I'm going to let, I'm just going to let you all know it's going to go through the site. It'll be this week. So I am shut down right now because I have to finish all the charts this week. It, yes, Deanna is a medium. She brought Keith through to me. She is, we've been friends 30 years. Ask Jackie. She is a good medium. And I also wanted to thank Leah or Lee on here who was texting me last night while I was on the hooker track. <laughs> and giving me a reading from Keith. I will reply to you when I get my phone down. I haven't had a chance, but I was reading it. Um, yes, Lori's The Teen Project, and then you can email Lori. Um, I'll put information up here when I get off my phone. I'll put links under here. Give me a half an hour, okay? After I get home from court and or jail. Oh, God. Don't go to jail, for God's sake. The hooker track downtown after the Super Bowl. Lori, Lori runs. Um, no, Deanna, Deanna's an amazing medium. Doesn't matter how she works. We're different people. Deanna's an awesome medium, okay? She's completely contempt. Oh, I love you for that. I'm a contempting bitch, a contemptuous bitch. <laughs> um, yeah, De Deanna's amazing. She brought Keith through for me. And her experience has been invaluable for me as a person with my son being dead. Yes, I was working the hooker track. As I'm going to say it one more time. And then for you guys that did, here you go. Lori, go to theteenproject.com. Lori, uh, Bobby, you know Deanna. Lori and I and Phoenix were handing out compacts with a QR code. When you take your phone, if you've been trafficked or you're in trouble and you take your phone like a restaurant, right? Yeah, Keith had a good sense of humor. Keith was funny as fuck. He was always hiding on me and me going crazy. You take your phone and you pull up the QR code, open the menu. You can find the shelter, okay? You can find the shelter you need and an Uber will be sent to you. So you carry this and it has a QR code. This is called Safe Site. This is Lori's new project. She has many shelters. She's buying, her company is buying child, the old children of the night. So I will go back to work there because that is what I did 30 years ago and that is what I like to do. So Lori invites me out on her project. So we were walking downtown with the girls on the street last night in Inglewood as two old white ladies on the street with Phoenix. And that's what we were doing. So we were seeing, and we were putting flyers in the hotels and we had special ops with us. So we had Marines with us, right? So it is full circle. And in fact, I used to work on in, um, Imperial Highway down there in one of the strip clubs, not the point, but anyway, 
These are the QR codes. So I was sticking these everywhere. We were putting flyers in the, in the hotels and all of that. And special ops was watching us. One of them was tracking us on the street. Lori had an earpiece in her ear and she kept saying, can you hear this? And I'm like, no one, I can't wear the earpiece because I don't have hair unless I had a hoodie on. But anyway, Lori was wearing the earpiece and Phoenix didn't have her phone. So we all stayed together and we were, we walk up to the girls on the street we ask them if they want to compact. They do. They're standing on a fucking street waiting for tricks, right? So we show them what to do when they're pimps watching from around the corner, which these girls are pimped out. We go, look, it's a compact. And then we show them the QR code and we tell them we are looking for girls that are 12, 13, 14. Shouldn't be, um, you know what? I stopped drinking Starbucks. I stopped. I switched timelines. Anyway, so we do this. So the girls that are younger, not seasoned girls, but the older girls do not want the younger girls in the business. So they will give them help. Tracking the young girls to see if they need help from pimps or johns. <laughs> exactly. So this is it. And let me show you for those that didn't. I know I've done this three times on the thing, but let me show you. So this right here. Okay, I have to... I have to do it. You put your camera over it like in a restaurant and then it opens up to safe site. That's what a QR code is. Then the girls will click safe site and they'll put in if they're their gender, their their um their everything. They'll put in their location. So we're gonna put in Sun Valley, put in their location, and then they go to search. So it searches the San Fernando Valley. It pinpoints your location, okay? And then we have Freehab has 16 crisis treatment beds. And the drug center has, or Freehab drug side has 74. The teen, call, the teen project college house has six beds. You can pick any of these shelters for whatever your issue is. Click. And then you just click on that and it shows you what the shelters are like inside. It answers your questions. You put your first name, your last name. You could put Sally Smith. It doesn't fucking matter. You can put a fake phone number. You don't have to put your email address and you click book now. As soon as you hit book now, a car is sent to you, Uber, and it picks you up. It has your location. That's all a girl that's trafficked. Once she gains her phone back and has this, anybody can give her the QR code. You see, that's Lori's idea. I'm just helping her distribute them. I'm her bitch. I just help distribute. So this is what she's just developed. And by the way, when she was developing it, she called me and the guy that she had developing it was, um, yeah, 13, totally. The, the, let's see. Yeah, the girls are happy. Of course, they love the compacts, but we didn't rescue any last night. However, they have it, right? So when they see a younger girl that's just been trafficked out, they can give it to her. Or if they want to get away from their pimp one day and they're fucking had enough with their dumbass pimp, then they can do that, right? They can stay in the shelter for, I don't know, as long as they like. I was going to run away to Lori's um, Vera's Sanctuary up in Orange County. <laughs> I, I called her up about two and a half years ago when I separated and I'm like, do you have room for me? Um, so Lori's like, yeah, I've got room for you. But this Lori's designed this. So when she was first designing the app in Europe, the guy stole it from her. So she was on the phone with me and I'm like, no, you're going to get the app back. So she got the app back and then she went with a Microsoft developer who developed it. And so the app is out there and that's what she's doing. Now she's getting people knowing no, it's not Libra Lori. It's Lori. It's not Libra Lori. It's Pisces Lori. But Libra Lori is awesome too. But this is Lori Burns, okay, from the Teen Project. So that girl, Lori Burns on Instagram, hit her up. Yes, they have. This is just starting. This is just starting right now. Yeah, it's easy and fast when they're in a pinch. If they're in a car, if they're in a taxi, if they're in an Uber going somewhere, they can do this. And as soon as they log in, they're tracked and off they go. Yeah, it can be used later. And it's that. Yeah, she trade. Of course she did. She's got a team of lawyers. Yeah. Libra Lori is Randy Rhodes Lori. That's right. That's correct. Yes. So there it is, you guys. So I love how Lori, she's like, she's like, this is the close-up side, and <laughs> it's like it's a compact. 
Lori's like, I never had a compact. I'm like, okay. Anyway, yeah, it was um, pretty good. It was pretty interesting last night. It, I wonder if I still have the videos. I'll have to post. I'll have to post some of the videos. Um, no, I don't, they're off the internet now. But anyway, that's what she did. So um, yeah, that's the best that she can do. So that's what she's doing. She's distributing these all over. She's getting it out there. Safe site. This is what she's doing. Okay. So this is actually really good. There's flyers going out. She's buying benches and she's doing like everything she can do in order to facilitate growth for her business and community. This is what she does because she was a prostitute. She's a former trafficked prostitute. She's a former prostitute that got out of foster care. She's been through the whole thing and is psychic as, as well. So there you go. That's what she is. There you go. Northern California. I will tell her Northern California, this is what she's doing. So I'm lucky enough that we are friends and she's invited me to do what I like to do to at least feel like I'm contributing on the planet because I don't have much of that left anymore. Since my Jason doesn't come around and he's an adult and my Keithy's not here. So Lori has given me a way to mother other people. So it's her, it's her thing. So that's it. So there you go. So I've showed you guys a lot. So you guys know. I'm Yeah, I will. I'm going to find out how you can donate. I'm going to put links below. And then again, I'm going to put this. You might want to check this out. Savedinamerica.org. I'm going to put it up again. I have Lila. I know, but Lila's getting a busy schedule. Thank you so much for that, Rhonda. Thank you. Here you go. Savedinamerica.org are part of the special ops guy. Guys that were with us last night driving driving well shotgun in our van in our car because they followed us four of them so these guys rescue runaways with their parents so there you go i'm not even trying to be noble i don't feel like i fit in anywhere else in the world and i never did i fit in with those girls that's so it's kind of a selfish thing sometimes we help people for our own need to be needed um or to have something to do so it's not noble in my case it's just something that I've, I've always felt more comfortable with girls that come from that background. I don't feel comfortable with like PTA moms and people like that if they don't understand the background, kind of. Um, so that's just me. So I feel good with that. And Lori is truly generous. Like I can go in and read the girls and all of that. And they have a psychic room at Freehab, which is my room. It's Sloan's room. Lori put a plaque on the door. So I painted it. It looks like a French brothel. The other rooms are also talentedly decorated from the other people that donated to the rooms. And then there's my room, pink and purple. So the girls that go into the shelter get the crazy, the crazy brothel room is mine. Um, yeah, the girls are really interesting. So I feel like it's my purpose. I feel like that is my purpose. So there you go. And I'm really grateful that Lori has it because I learn a lot from her and I like meeting the girls. Some of the girls, you know, there's, at Freehab, there's different girls. There's girls that come from gang backgrounds. There's girls that come from robbery backgrounds. There's girls that come from prostitution backgrounds, drug backgrounds. So there's a whole different variety of girls that come in the shelters and girls that are prostituted, girls that aren't drug addicts. Sometimes it's a combination of all. Anyway, um... Good, you have it up. Yeah, the teen project. Are you gonna cry? But anyway, that's it. So you guys know the story. You, yeah, let's see. Oh, you were lucky to, it's always made me feel as though I was blacking out. Yeah, it's, uh, we, yeah, no, it's the, it, the greatest gift I had was my Aunt Betty. She ran a group home. She saved me for eight months. She, she saved me. She literally saved me. She took me in for eight months and I mean, I could have stayed longer, but you know, I bailed, but she saved me because it was a normal loving environment. And Lori is a lot like that. She does it in a shelter sense, but she's there for her girls. So it's that, um, I know, right? Monkey in a cage. See, now I have Tourette's. I have to stop saying it anyway. Um, yeah. They are crying. They are crying. That's it. So you guys know the teenproject.com and safe site right here. So these are the, I'm going to find out how to get more of these and how we can put them in areas in Northern California. I will tell Lori, I just don't feel a purpose. When you're raising a kid, you have a purpose. But my kids, you know, they grew up. 
Keith died. I have Lila, but I don't have kids in my house to distract me from my life. And so these kids are good. And I just remember with the girl, 2017, 2018, the girl born right after Keith's birthday, my client's daughter, when she went out hooking and doing drugs, um, that broke my heart. I knew her since she was young. She used to come for readings when she was 14. Anyway, she started doing the heroin and it was a problem. But for me to try to help her felt like that was a good thing. And it has nothing to do with me being anything other than trying to save a piece of myself. So I want you guys to understand that. I was trying to save a piece of myself by saving her and then not having my my boys to fawn over or to be around as much because they have their own life. So that's what I was trying to do. That's it. And Aunt Betty was trying to save a piece of herself when she helped people like me. Yeah, no, I tried. I did. I went out. She's sober now. That girl, she's sober and she called me after Keithy passed. She's definitely sober. She's doing really well. So I have an old rusty bike outside. I missed that one. Yeah, it's reciprocal. Um, yeah, no, it's reciprocal. My son is 32 and I have no life. Go help someone. That's right. I mean, I don't know a purpose. I was just here to have my kids. I thought I wanted to get married, but really I wanted my kids. I could have done without the marriage. <laughs> How would I have the kids? The marriage part was never compatible to me, but the kids was what I wanted. It was very hard, but I wasn't going to let them go. So there's that. Do they see in here? Oh, yeah. If somebody's if somebody is passed, they do. No, Lila's Jason's. Jason's Jason's daddy. Daddy Jason. Lila, Kenna, and Jason. Keithy was Unky Keith. Lila spoke at his funeral. Lila, Lila's a healer by nature, so I'm going to say that for Lila. Um... Yeah. Well, yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good. Oh no, somebody died from COVID. Yeah. Eminem was not himself. He's probably a clone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah. I like the girls. I like them. I understand. And like when Phoenix talks astrology, so we're at the dinner table last night and she's, we're in the hotel and she's like, let's guess everybody's sign. And I'm like, we're all guessing there were three Pisces in the room, but we're all guessing. And I'm like, I'm like, this one's this, this one's this, this one's this. And we got them all wrong. And I'm like, I'm supposed to be the astrologer. And I, and so Phoenix is like, I think they're showing their rising signs. And I was like, oh my God. Um, anyway. Yeah. So it's kind of an interesting, um, no, she doesn't. Lila does have other siblings on the other side of the family. Yes, she does. Uh, so there's that kids need both parents. Not, they do, but if both parents fight and are aggressive and violent, it's not a good upbringing for the kids. So I would say that I would say one parent is better than two parents that fight in a marriage because the fighting is traumatic. It's destructive and your kids will hate you. So whichever one's fighting for their, you know, fighting back is going to be a problem. That, yeah, like feeding. Yeah, exactly. Try do anything. That's what I did. I wasn't able to. Yeah, I feel part of another part. So anyway, you guys keep in mind, go to the teenproject.com. See what you can do. I'm going to text Lori on this phone when I shut it down. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. Peace out and peace out. Peace out, y'all. Peace out. Eric, I hope you don't go to jail or wherever the hell it is you think you're going don't go. Just say no. Say, excuse me. I just say no. No. No, thank you. No, thank you. I've had enough. No, no, thank you. Peace out. Um, <laughs> peace out. I'm sorry. Sorry, Mr. Officer. No, 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 I cannot. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Have fun. I will put links down after I get off the phone with her.